Springs fans to Oshwikin Speedway for Friday night excitement. Brought to you by Strickland's. It's Drive Safe, Ride Safe, Race Safe Bicycle Night. I'm Greg Kellman with me, Adam Ross, Clinton Jeffrey down trackside as we get ready for our first racing of the night. We're going to do things the same way we did with our Fender division uh, like we did last week where we break them up into two semis. Here's the Thunderstocks, and Adam Ross has the starting lineup for the first group. These Thunderstock heats are brought to you by Hunsingers. Hunsingers is your go-to business for plumbing, electrical, and heating in Haldeman, Norfolk, Six Nations, and surrounding areas. Semi number one will be 10 laps in distance. Here's how they're scheduled to roll off. On the pole out of Canfield, the 0-3 is George Grossel. Starting second from Caster Center, the 28-D is Donnie Lampman. The 11-R from Port Colburn is Bryce Richardson. He'll start third. Starting fourth from Tilbury, the 17-W is Travis Whittle. Fifth from Oshwegan, the 93 is Melissa Miller. Sixth from Hamilton, the 43 is Kyle Andrus. Starting seventh from Guelph, the 79 is Chris Hale. Starting eighth from Jerseyville, the 53 is Logan Schwedick. Starting ninth from Ancaster, the 19 is Kyle Wirt. Starting 10th from Hagersville, the 93K is Mike Klazinga. Starting 11th from Hagersville, the 8 is Ryan Dinning. Starting 12th from Dundas, the 24R is Rodney Rutherford. Some visitors here tonight. Starting 13th from Tilbury, the 76J is Jeff Drummond. Starting 14th from Hagersville, Brewster Baker, and the 49 is Dave Bailey. Starting 15th from Morpeth, the 5G is Gord Grant. Starting 16th from Port Colburn, the 196 is Gino Duguay. And rounding out the field in the 1A, it's Jake Hooker. First green flag of the night in the air, and Grossel will lead them down into corner number one. Bright sunshine here at Oshrican Speedway on a beautiful Friday night. Glad you could join us, all those here and in person, and on GeForce TV as the Thunderstocks are off and at it. And a couple of them make it three, get collected up in corners three and four. And I believe that's going to put us under the caution flag for the first time here. Rodney Rutherford gets rolling, and he'll rejoin the tail end of the field. Looks like it might be a couple of our Western drivers there hung up. Jake, uh, Jake Hooker's down there with Jeff Drummond. Greg, I gotta ask, how was your week camping? You had to ask. I know you were looking forward to it immensely. When, when we weren't submerged in water, and I mean our site was totally low ground, it was hot. And uh, other than that, Monday was beautiful, and that's about it. But uh, I would rate it a two out of ten. Well, I'm glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> You must have had a bad week if you're glad to be sitting next to me. <laughs> so Clinton Jeffrey is down on the scene where the 76 of Jeff Drummond has come to a rest connected with another car. Is it Gord Grant, the other car? The 76? No, 76 is uh, oh, Jeff Drummond. Drummond. Yeah, sorry. I got Brad Othier here, guys. The 1H. Unless that's a, someone yeah, else. Yeah, I, I think Jake tonight. Hooker. It should be Jake Hooker yeah, driving. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And you, you can tell pretty quick if you look in the window. Yeah. Well, there's all kinds of problems here on the left front. They are going to need a hook from the big red. Jack, come on around here. Take a look at this side. Looks like it's a problem they can fix. They've got a fender issue. But this is what scares me, Adam. Down here. You've got an oil breather from the engine. So that means they have knocked that off the car, which is going to be more of a problem possibly. We'll have to see what happens there. Well, they're a veteran crew. They know what they're doing. So they'll get to go to work. They'll have a little bit of time to get that done. Now let's, let's see if we can put the Telus reader to use. Spencer, can you give me a static shot of turn one from, from up on the tower, up on the roof? I want to do, Clinton normally opens us up with a Case IH track report. I want to give one from up here because we were talking about it during practice, but turn number one is going to be an exciting spot tonight. And here's why. 
The outside looks fantastic, and I used the wrong tool. Story of my life. You are the wrong tool. Pretty much. Oh, that's much better. The outside. That squiggle up in the sky. The outside looks great. I've had enough of you. Why is that? What are you way? doing? Listen, I don't know why you got to be like that. You're making me nervous. <laughs> but the outside groove looks fantastic. The inside groove looks fantastic. Yeah, that's not showing up. Story of my life, but that's okay because the people that are here can just look down and. But through the middle, you can see the the rough clay and Spencer. I think I broke your pen. Through the middle of one and two is still very heavy and very rough. And when we saw the sprint cars go through it, it was real awkward for the 360 sprint cars. It was sending the cars lurching in the corner. So you can go way the long way around on the high side of one and two, or you can go the short way. But if you wind up going through the middle, it's going to be a wild ride. And if you take that squiggle up in the sky, that's, there you go. Now it... Nice, Adam. That's my signature. There, works now. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. In my mind, that was going to be epic. Oh, it was. Hmm. Epic failure. Let's try it again. Ten laps the distance for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks in qualifier number one. George Grossel out in front. He was out front last week as well for a few laps in the heat race, looking great, and then things went a little sour for him. Travis Whittle in the 17 pulls alongside. He'll battle for the lead through three and four. Whoa, Grossel catches the back end of that car as they come through the corner. Whittle out in front, work right in tow with Grossel on the outside. They're three wide behind them as Ryan Denning will shoot up into the fourth spot. And you've got Donnie and Lamp and Christopher Hale side by side for fifth. Coming off of turn number four to complete lap three. It's still Whittle with Kyle Wirt working the inside, and Whittle's figured it out way up on the high side in that 17. It is a much farther distance he's running through one and two than Kyle Wirt down low. They almost draw even by the end of the back straightaway. Puff of smoke there mid-pack from Logan Schwedek, although he had that issue all last week as well. It didn't slow the advantage electric number 53 down at all, so he'll continue on. He's up to the fifth position as he gets by Grossel. The one thing about a heavier racetrack, Greg, when there's a lot of grip in the racetrack, some cars that aren't absolute top shelf cars can run really well because handling isn't as big of an issue when there's a lot of grip out there. Later on when the track slicks off, that's when you'll see the cream rise to the top. But right now, even drivers that have a decent car but not great, they can drive them pretty well. Six laps go on to the scoreboard with Kyle Wirt out in front. In that number 19 machine, he's been a threat all season long. Again, running two semi qualifiers here tonight instead of the four individual heats. And uh, the drivers liked it last week. I think we enjoyed it last week. We're back at it again here tonight. At, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the evening, it's the Gales Auto Aftermarket Cash Blast Ooh. 54. Significant contact between George Grossel and Gord Grant coming off of four. Grossel got sideways between three and four, and he drove across about ten lanes trying to save it off of turn four. Kyle Wirt leads with two laps left to go. Lots of smoke pouring out of the back of the Grossel. 0-3 at the back of the pack, right there with Grant. I would have thought that's... No, the rear end is knocked out of that car. That's what it looks like to me. Went into turn one, and you can see an awful lot of that left rear. White flag is out on this one. One more time around for Kyle Work, who's got this one in the bag. Oh, oh Whittle. Travis Whittle. Whittle goes around at two. Just got a Whittle too high. Oh, good one, Elmer. Oh, and now Grossel goes around finally in corner number two as the checkered comes out. And it's going to be the point leader, Kyle Wirt, picking up the victory in this one over Ryan Denning. And then Chris Hale in the third spot, Dave Bailey fourth, Logan Schwedek in fifth. And Rodney Rutherford, after being involved in the first yellow, rebounds for a sixth place finish. Clinton Jeffrey, what do you see? Just want to mention a little bit of stuff that went on at the driver's meeting tonight. We invited Gail Hillen to talk about 
the donation he gave and sponsored this race. You know, Gail originally was going to give $2,000. Then he said, I want to kick up to $2,500, and I want to give another $500 for second and third tonight. So a big shout-out to Gail Hill, one of the earliest sponsors here at the Speedway. He also talked in the drivers' meeting and said, hey, guys, how would you feel if we started all the cars tonight? Well, of course, all the drivers were behind that, so I had to sneak one through on Doug Leonard. We're going to start all the Thunderstocks in the house here tonight, guys. Woo! 33 is where we're standing right now. Yeah, that'll be awesome. No, I think I think that's exciting. And just to explain quickly what's going on, these qualifiers, yes, as you mentioned, we're going to split the field into two, do two qualifiers, brings a bit more excitement, trying to save a bit of time. The drivers liked it, gigs more entertaining. So everybody's in tonight. If you qualify in the top 10 in your qualifier, you'll get your handicap spot where you should have been starting based on regular uh, lineups, guys. So hopefully that gives you some insight. It does so, Clinton. Thank you very much. Heat race number two for the Middleport Mechanical Thunder Sox will line up like this. On the pole out of Thorold, the 11 is Go Fast Teeple. Second from Brantford, the 13 is Casey Huffman. Third, it's Ricky Bobby, Mike Thorne from Caledonia in the 55. Fourth from Keister Center, the 28 is Jim Lampman. In fifth, from Binbrook, the 427, it's Smokey Tim Phelan. Sixth from Hamilton, the 25 is Ken Sargent. Seventh from Burlington, the 97, is Ron Logie. Eighth from Harley, the 37, is Rob Hoskins. In ninth from Canfield, the 32, is Mark Fawcett. Tenth from Welland, the 96, O, is John Overholt. Eleventh from Hagersville, the 23, is Trevor DeBoer. Twelfth from Victoria, it's the big dog in the 84, RK, Ryan Beagle. Thirteenth from Oshwegan, the 21, Z, is Braden Burning. Fourteenth from Merlin, the 96, is Steve Shaw Sr., 15 from Port Robbins in the 108 is Zach Leach. And rounding out the field from Wayne Fleet, the 14 is Mitch Petta. So 33 cars will start tonight's 54 lap main event. With many thanks to Wall of Famer Gail Hill, a true gentleman and a generous soul, Greg. That he is. Just a uh, nice guy to be around and such a big supporter of not just the racetrack, so many different racers, whether it be year-long sponsorship or maybe a, a racer hard on their, their fortune and needing a part or some help to get to the track. And Gail's been there and, and just loves the sport. One other thing, guys, Gail said, hey, guys, in honor of my 54th wedding anniversary just recently on July 2nd, how about 54 laps instead of 50? All the drivers erupted, so it'll be 54 instead of 50 tonight. Here we go. Second qualifier underway. Casey Hoffman jumps ahead on the drop of the green flag, but here comes Jim Lampman around the top, and he's going to grab the lead off of corner number two. Power move by Jim Lampman coming down the front straightaway. He'll lead them down into turn three. Teeple hanging on to second. Mike Thorne in that 55 machine, he has had a tough season so far. Just hasn't had the luck and hasn't quite had the speed we would expect out of that Burger Barn 55. He runs back there side by side with uh, Ken Sargent in the 25 machine as they go down the back stretch following... Go fast, Teeple in the 11. Out in front, though. As we see him cross the stripe, it's all Jim Lampman had that great start on the drop of the green flag and pulled away from the rest of the pack. Teeple now feeling the heat from Mikey Bobby, who's on the outside. The Petro Plus Burger Barn 55. Mikey Bobby picks up the second spot. So you see the announcer's curse works in reverse. I talked about him doing a little poorly this year, and he takes off towards the front of the field. Now we know, Greg. 12th in the standings is Mike Thorne this year, so it's, I don't think, been as bad of a start as he's had over the last couple of years. A, a real rough go for Mike Thorne, but uh, looking strong here tonight in that Camaro. Looking back at the battle for 10th, Casey Huffman has the 10th spot right now in the 13th. Why is that a big deal? Because if he can finish 10th, he'll start on the front row of the feature because of the handicap. If he finishes 11th, he'll start 22nd in the feature. Halfway home in this second qualifier for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. 
Jim Lantman leads Mike Thorne, Ken Sargent, go fast Teeple, and Tim Phelan putting the pressure now on Teeple for position four. Phelan again, just that one puff of smoke. He doesn't stick around, just as he goes in the corner, poof, clears up. I'm sure that's the sound it makes too, inside the car. Poof. It's a little cartoon bubble in words. Well, he's up to the top side as on the bottom comes Mark Fawcett, who came so close to getting his first career win at the Big O. Last Friday night, he has feature wins, but never here at Oshweekin Speedway. He's been snake bit here, and you could see it last week. He'd had enough. He wants to find that car at the top of the podium. Last week, Trevor DeBoer picked up the win in that 23. Yeah, you could see the frustration that bubbled over for him as well there last week. And, you know, it's tough to feel bad for him because he's on the podium. It's a good night, but he's been trying. He's been so close so many times. White flag is out. Final trip around for Jim Lamp. And I'll tell you what, Mike Thorne has closed the gap. He's running out of time, but he's definitely cut down that lead that Jim Lampman built up. And uh, that number 55 is looking racy tonight. So this is going to do good things for Jim Lampman, but also for Mike Thorne. Like you said, both of them will go back to the pits with some confidence. As the checkered flag flies, Lampman will take the win. Thorne comes home second, and it'll be Sargent in third. Fawcett and Phelan rounding out the top five ahead of Teeple, Bleach, Logie, DeBoer, and Ryan Beagle. So qualifying concluded for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. And we'll take a quick break here on GeForce TV, and when we come back, it'll be time for 360 Sprint Cars. Okay, folks, get Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... To TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. Yahoo! TKC will recycle your piece of car. Got a piece of car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement from here at Oshwinkin Speedway on G Forest TV. It's Strickland's Bicycle Night here at the Big O. Greg Kelman, Adam Ross, Clinton, Jeffrey. Here bringing you all the action. And uh, we are ready for the 360 Sprint Cars brought to you by Cool Kids Ice and Water and Core Pack Merchandising. Qualifying Heats brought to you by Plazix Auto Recyclers. Starting on the pole out of Hamilton in car number 19D, it's Alan Downey to his outside. John Burbridge Jr. to St. Williams in the 21. Road number two on the inside from Oshweek in the 68 is Aaron Turkey to his outside. The defending champ at a Tilsonburg, the 17X of Corey Turner. Pulling off fifth at Lewiston, New York, the 81 is Derek Jonathan. Kevin Paul starts sixth. And the 46 out of St. Catharines, Eric Gledhill from 10th shirt. And the seven starts seventh, Glenn Styers. Uh, and the zero car out of Oshweekin starts eighth. And Jamie Turner from Keister Center in the 11 brings up the tail of the field as they are green into corner number one. A little bobbing and weaving going on down there. And it's Alan Downey out in front of the caution flag will fly. With the jump, lights will be out. So they're calling Alan Downey with the jump all the way down the back straightaway. 
Doug Leonard was yelling, 19, slow it down, 19, slow it down. You must be beside each other. And Downey was way ahead and took off. So he will get sent back a row. That brings Aaron Turkey to the front. Complete restart, guys. Aaron Turkey hit those bumps in turn one. And that almost turned bad. Back we go. They try again to start this one on Aaron Turkey. Three wide behind him. Corey Turner slams the door shut on Allen Downey and will pull away towards the race leader. I think Corey Turner heard what I said in practice about him not seeming as quick this year as he had sometimes last year because he is on that loud pedal up in the second spot behind Aaron Turkey. Allen Downey though not letting him get away. Downey to the inside for second. 19D of Allen Downey on the inside. Corey Turner in the 17X this year on the outside line at the Nathan Ackland Racing Machine there. The Lone Wolf Fireworks sponsorship defending champ new ride in the second spot chasing down Aaron Turkey. Turkey out in front uses the high line in three and four. And he's going to go through the rough in one and two. Corey Turner to the inside. See if he can close up any ground on the leader. Nearly half a straightaway the gap between first and second. Halfway home to this one. Aaron Turkey is your leader on lap number four. Corey Turner trying to track him down. Man on the move right now. Eric Gledhill started back in position number seven. He is up to the fourth spot in that Oakwood transport machine. The back of the pack spreading out as well. They've been having some battles earlier on in this one. They have sorted out. Eric Gledhill, the car to watch, as Greg mentioned, that Oakwood transport number seven, trying to close in on Allen Downey as we've got two laps to go. Aaron Turkey had that rough start to the year, that massive crash with Glenn Styers in three and four in the opening week. And here he is out in front in that rebuilt car, having a good run, coming to the white flag. Confidence builder is never a bad thing. I know Aaron Turkey was out last night giving Trayton Lapsevich some pointers as he ran the crate sprint car. And that goodwill paid back tonight. Had a great run. Things have gone his way. And he'll take the checkered flag in heat number one. Corey Turner comes home second. Downey in third. Fourth goes to Glen Hill. Rounding out the top five is Derek Jonathan ahead of Glenn Styers. Jamie Turner. Johnny Burbridge. And Kevin Paul. Aaron Turkey picks up Plastics Auto Recycler Heat Race number one win. See a little body flap going on there. You got some of that too, don't you? <laughs> hey guys, just want to jump in there and uh, please do <laughs> say that Glenn Styers was one of the first ones in the pits, as you can imagine tonight. He walked by and said, my crew sucks for drawing for me. I'm going to draw tonight. Out of 100 numbers, I think he drew 89 and started tailing that heat. So he wasn't much better. Picked up some passing points, though, so that may help Glenn here. Heat number two rolling out onto the speedway. And Josh Hansen's going to start from the pole in this one. And remember, one week ago, came into the night, point leader. And midway through that feature event, got tangled up with Jamie Turner. And into the inside barrier, broke the left front, put him out of the feature. And finished dead last, I believe. There were All the cars were still in... Uh, in racing action and he was the first one off into the infield and that did some damage to his points run puts him down to fourth in the standings but nonetheless some redemption tonight for Josh Hansen on the pole he's from Beamsville in the 88H to his outside from Brantford the 49L is Lucas Smith joining us for the first time in 2023 from Picton in the 84 it's Tyler Rand and his outside from Scotland in the 47X D-Dubs Dylan Westbrook Lining up fifth out of Niagara Falls, the car number 70 is Bailey Hurd, and starting in sixth out of Grimsby, the 90 is Travis Cunningham. And in the back row, starting seventh out of Inbrook, car number nine is the live wire, Liam Martin. And Mike Bowman starts in the eighth spot, car number 71 out of St. Catharines. Heat number two for the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars. Down through one and two they go three wide through the second turn. Lucas Smith gets the best of that, but out in front it's all Josh Hansen driving away from this one here in the early going. Hansen, your leader over Lucas Smith, and you got Tyler Rand running in that third spot and car number 84, three wide for that second spot. Dylan Westbrook was in the middle. That car a little jukey there through the corners. 
He'll try the middle again in three and four, and they'll battle three wide. Lucas Smith still maintaining that spot. The young man from Brantford doing a great job. The even younger man from Beansville is out in front, and that's Josh Hansen in the 88H. Good battle for that second spot. Tyler Rand on the bottom. Lucas Smith on the outside as they work off the corner. Smith has the spot. But Tyler Rand still digging away in that Terry's taxi. Elbrook car number 84. Here comes Dylan Westbrook again trying in the middle. Runs out of room there between those two cars. Yeah, the real estate closed up big time as they reach the halfway point. Tyler Rand up to second. Lucas Smith nowhere near done this battle as he takes it down into turn number one. And every lap has been basically the same, Greg. And has and Dylan just trying to find a way. He showed the nose that time on Lucas Smith. Oh, Lucas Smith kicks it sideways awkwardly in four. That will definitely open the door for D-Dubs as he'll sling by. And now we'll go to the outside looking to get by Tyler Rand. He was able to take the line of Lucas Smith and get up towards the moist clay on the outside of turn two. He got a big drive off the corner and then he'll sweep around Tyler Rand. Out in front, though, Josh Hansen, more than a straightaway lead. Westbrook back in second, Rand third. Can Lucas Smith close in and battle for that third spot as Travis Cunningham closing in as well? Josh Hansen has been out in front this entire time, pulling away from the rest of the back. Dylan Westbrook holding down second. Good run for Tyler Rand, remaining in that third position. Checkers out. Hansen comes back with a heat race win. Coming home second is going to be D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook, Tyler Rand third. Who's going to be fourth? Smith over Cunningham, Bowman, Bailey, Hurd, Liam Martin in that nine machine. Will come home eighth. Now, Clinton Jeffrey, explain Mike Bowman to me, because I know there are times when you can run multiple classes and there's times when you cannot. Correct. So tonight is an action sprint tour west for the crate division it's a tour race for the action sprint tour west series so that means mike who normally races at 360s is able to compete in both classes because he is point gathering in both situations so on the double points nights we will allow them for example if someone's a crate racer and trying to dabble up to the sos when the sos come to town we would let them run both there you go well explained right after this heat race there'll be another list of names for bike giveaways Greg Cowlin's going to do that for us. No, actually, I heard you were. <laughs> I get programs and, and you see what admission I admission tickets and Greg subtly this is in the your background. one chance. Yeah, it's all I, good. I, I'm, I'm standing I'm, up for me. <laughs> I will make some young people very, very happy, and that is my pleasure. All right. Final qualifying heat of the night for the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars on the pole for this one. Out of Freelton in car number 12, DD, it's Darren Dryden alongside him from Mount Bridges, the 45, Tricky Nick. Nick Sheridan. Starting in third out of Scotland, the 87X is Sean Evans and his outside from Oshuik in the 77T of Tyler Paulus. Starting in fifth out of Beachville, car number five is DJ Christie and lining up in the sixth position from Brantford in car number 10, downtown Mitch Brown. And in the seventh spot from Dorchester, car number one is Holly Porter. And starting in the eighth spot from Dunville, car number 15, Ryan Turner. Everybody will qualify tonight in this 360 sprint car division. So in the heats, they're battling for opportunity to draw first for starting lineup and for some of Nathan Ackland's hard charger money. Aaron Dryden out in front at the drop, the green flag. Sean Evans really scooted up the hill in corner number two and makes it three wide. Oh, Tyler Paulus. I, you know, I give Tyler Paulus so much credit for the nerve that he has. That's a lot of experience he's out there racing with, even though DJ Christie is very young. Those guys are very sure of their tires. Tyler Paulus is still learning what to do, but he's got the nerve to be able to do it. And Tyler is not back down from a challenge. And is really, that's what's allowed him to progress so quickly in that 77T is he doesn't have that fear. He'll try things and, and puts the car to the limit. DJ Christie ran out of racing room there on the back stretch, trying to get to the outside of Mitch Brown. Brown took that momentum to the inside of Sean Evans for second. Might get two for one as he closes in on Darren Dryden. Here comes downtown Mitch Brown right around the box on the bottom. Here he comes off a corner four at the line. He'll lead on lap number four. 
Brown to the lead on the bottom. Darren Dryden going to work around the middle of the racetrack. Sean Evans slid up the track, but DJ Chrissy said, not so fast. I'm already up here. What a move there by DJ Chrissy. Here he is tracking down Darren Dryden in the 12th DD. And I'll tell you what, I was super impressed by DJ Christie last Friday night in that race. He wasn't there for the win, but he was stalking down the top two. And here he comes trying to track down leader Mitch Brown. And DJ Christie advanced seven spots in last week's feature to wind up on the podium. That's a tall order when you're racing against the likes of Dylan Westbrook, Mike Bowman. That was an all-out fight between Bowman and Westbrook, one of the best ones we've seen in a while. And DJ was right there matching them in pace, not able to get up and challenge. But here he is in that second spot. Meanwhile, out in front, no surprise. Downtown Mitch Brown around the bottom off of quarter number four. Checkers come out. He'll pick up the heat race win. Christie comes home second. Dryden in third. Sean Evans fourth. Fifth goes to Ryan Turner in the 15 car. And it's Holly Porter and Tyler Paulus rounding out the field. All right, race fans, now it's for nine years and older. Listen for your name. If your name is called, go down and pick out a bicycle. Reed Hamilton. Wesley Taylor. Jax Bennett. Malena O'Bealy. Bailey Westbrook. Alisa Copping, Piper Teagues, Reese Fretz, Liam Felker, and Evie Hill. Your name is read out. Go on down and pick out a bicycle. And if it wasn't, make sure you listen for your name a little later on. Your chance might be coming still. There's a lot of bikes down there. HRW Automotive Mini Stocks ready to go with their first of two semi-qualifiers here. Starting on the pole in race number one from Caledonia. It's the pinball, Mike Guyberson. To his outside from Brant for the 9K is Kylie Dixon. Starting in the third position from York in car number nine, it's Tim DeBoer. And lining up fourth out of Oshweek in the 188 of Paul Longboat. Tristan De Silva will start in fifth. He's from Waterdown in the 0-1. Nico Hansen alongside from Beamsville in the 27. Starting in seventh at Waterford, car number four, that is Wade Thorne. And Graydon Lyons from Cambridge in the 32L lines up eighth. Mark Schroeder from Beachville in the 66 starts in the ninth spot. Starting in the tenth spot from Waterford, I believe is what you said, Adam. Yes, the 1A, that is Ashton Dickey. Lining up 11th in car 11E out of Linden, that's Jeff Elslager. Starting in 12th from Hamilton, Crystal Sewells of in the 81D, 81D is uh, Crystal Sewells starting in 13. Alex Riley from St. Catharines in 17. Then it's Sierra Cuse tonight in the 7B from Beamsville. And Miranda Weiler from Simcoe in the 22. Starts 15. Problem right off the start for Nico Hansen in the 27. That car just did not come up to speed. He takes that car off into the pits, but it really bottlenecked the outside row on that start. So it's Longboat out in front. The three-car battle behind that breaks up as Tristan De Silva pulls away and tries to track down Longboat in the 188. Longboat, we've talked about him all season long, just showing all sorts of speed. Great improvement. Tristan De Silva in that jibs number 01. He's already shown a lot of improvement. He's a contender week in and week out. So is Wade Thorne in that four machine. Off the corner they work another time. Again, these HRW Automotive Mini Stocks doing the same thing that the Thunder Stocks did with the two semi-qualifiers instead of the four qualifying heats as the battle for the lead heats up. And Greg, I'll tell you what I like about this as opposed to running three or four heats. In this format, you get a couple more laps, but there, it's far more likely you'll have someone to race with. You know, instead of having seven cars, eight cars, You've got 15 cars out there, so you're always having fun. You're always staying busy. And that's good for the newer drivers. It's more competition with cars around you in a longer race. It's almost a, kind of a feature type situation. And oh. now we got one going around Schroeder into the blocks. Well, now he gets off the wall. Nice save there. Very nice save for Martin Schroeder in that 66. 
is out in front. Tristan De Silva leads the way. They're working to the inside of the pinball. Mike Guyverson and Wade Thorne has a good run in that blue number four. He had to check up going into turn three. Here comes De Silva, your leader, off a of corner number four. He's going to have a challenge at the line. Ashton to make that Wade Thorne to the inside. As they go down around Kylie Dixon, down in corner number one, Thorne goes up the banking, De Silva down, and Thorne's lost power as his teammate gets into the back of him on the back stretch. Yeah, Thorne lost his momentum. I think he's got a right front tire down in that four machine. He's going to have to try to limp that home one more lap as De Silva's out in front of Longboat in the second spot. De Silva, Longboat, Dickey, and Elslager right now, your top four. And that uh, 17 machine of Alex Riley started all the way in the back in the 13th spot up there into the top five. Checkered flag going to fly, and it'll be Tristan De Silva taking the win. Coming home second is Paul Longboat, Dickey, Elslager, Riley round out the top five. Then is DeBoer, Hughes, Wade Thorne limps that car home in the eighth spot, followed by Martin Schroeder and Graydon Lyons. Guys, I got some messages. It's a little tough to hear the name. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the next and final mini stock qualifier. Then we're going to go to commercial break here on the stream. And then you can rate off those names again for me. Okay, Adam? Thank you much. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Oh, you'll do it. Second qualifier coming out onto the speedway. Steve Conway out of Leamington, the 88, starts on the pole looking for... Some mechanical fortune here tonight for that car to operate. He had problems just getting the trailer home last Friday night when it rains and pours for poor Steve Conway. We'll see what he can do here tonight in the 88 from the pole. Starting in the second spot from Paris in the 79, it's Steve Miller. Pulling off third from Stratford, the 54, that's Christopher French. And his dancing partner in the second row from Port Colbert, the 14L, that's John Lubeck. Starting in the fifth position from Guelph, car number one, Jason Tolton. And Mike Serentakos out of Smithville in the 6X. He'll start in the sixth spot. Second place in the points is Serentakos. Starting in the seventh position from Burlington, the 76, is Sean Taylor. Alongside from Caledonia, the 265, that's Mike Evers. Pulling off ninth out of St. Catharines, the 4A, that's Mason Anderson. And Ryan Hiller, the point leader from New Hamburg in the 21H, starts 10th. Fabi Oliveri. Picked up the win last Friday night. He's from Ancaster in the 16. He'll start 11th. Dustin Duga from Welland in the 14 DD. He'll line up 12th. 13th, that's where we find Lofton Schutz out of Oakland in the 24. And Doug Erskine back with us tonight in the 64E. He's from Brantford. He'll start in that 14th spot. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Those lineups are... Well, I was just noticing uh, no Nick Erskine tonight. Doug's in the 64E, no Nick tonight. Huh. I wonder if he's collecting points for Nick. Do we do that here? We do. I don't believe so. I don't think so either. Off they go here, the second qualifier for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Again, 29 cars here tonight for this four cylinder division. Three wide, they battle for the lead. Jason Tolton down on the inside. John Lubick in the middle. Chris French on the high side. And that 54 just behind them. Steady Eddie, Mike Sarantakos. Top five finishes every feature so far this year. Good three-car battle up front. French, Lubick, and Tolton. Sarantakos right behind them. Now, I heard you mention Stephen Michael Conway. Was he out here for the start Yeah, of he was. He lined up in his position, but I did not oh. see when he left the racetrack. Yeah, he's down on the infield. Oh, there he is. Okay. Couldn't see him for the for, play. Forgive <laughs> us. We, we looked directly into the sun. Whoa. Steve Miller going around in the 79 machine. He'll get the car back onto the racing surface. About half a track behind the race leader, Chris French, who's trying to hold off John Lubick in a great side-by-side -side battle for the lead as they reach the halfway of this semi for the mini stocks. Lubeck and French side by side. Lubeck led the lap that time by. Saren Tacos tucked up in behind. There's one and two in the point standings, but they're in reverse order. Saren Tacos there in the 6X. He's second in points. Ryan Hiller 
a few weeks back got his first career feature win. There he is in that nice black and yellow 21H machine. One car slow in turn number four. I believe that's Mason Anderson in the 4A machine. He'll limp that car down the front stretch. Side by side for first, side by side for third, side by side for fifth. It's like a pace lap, only faster. Two laps left to go for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Lopped and shuts in that 24, looking good out there. Working around the inside. He's passed a lot of cars those last two laps. VNR Recycling bringing us these qualifiers for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks as the battle for the lead heats up with one lap left to go. Lubick has it, but here comes Mike Sarantakis. Sarantakis drives into the rough stuff there in turn number one, looking for some bite. Didn't seem to work. Lubeck still got about a two-car length advantage as they work into turn three for the final time. Checkers coming out. Who's it going to be at? start finish line John Lubick over Mike Sarantakos Rodney Rutherford I think that's no. Lofton shots in, shuts in the 24 great come from behind third place finish started 13th Lofton shots up to the third position impressive drive there and it was Ryan Hiller in the fourth spot Christopher French rounds out the top five we'll take a quick break be back here on GeForce TV man discovered fire but quick quick perfected fire quick quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire wood stove or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper find your nearest quick quick retailer at quickquick.com it all started for us at the racetrack from dirt to water we have continued to keep the adrenaline and drive to make sure that we are always in the forefront we are driven to give our customers the absolute best in service, products, and memories with your family. No matter what your passion is, whether it's on the water, in the dirt, on the snow, or on the road, we will always be here welcoming you over and over again through the doors here at Lockhart's. You're not just a customer here, you are part of our team. Well, good evening everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement here at Oshuiken Speedway. It's Strickland's Bike Night. And uh, Strickland's our proud sponsor of the Strickland Brantford Chevrolet Crate Sprint Car Division on a regular Friday night. Tonight it's the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West. And this is a series race number three on the season. Adam Ross has a starting lineup for heat race number one. We have four heat races, nine cars in each of them. Huge thanks to Strickland's. We understand he had a barbecue tonight. Brought out some special guests and some VIPs, so we hope you're enjoying yourselves this evening. Heat race number one going to line up like this. On the pole from Kitchener, the number two is Travis Hofstetter. Starting second from Ridgeway, the 85C is Cam McKinnon. In third from St. Catharines, the 71 is Mike Bowman. Fourth from Stony Creek, the 24A is A.J. Lewis. Fifth from Oshwegan, the 420 is Victor Bomberry. Sixth from Rockwood, the 74 is Rob Neely. Seventh from Mosley, the 3S is Austin Rose. Eighth from St. Thomas, the 70MM is Gabby Darling. Rounding out the field from Brantford, the 88 is Lance Erskine. And how about Lance Erskine this season, Greg? You know, we talk about it in every division, though. There's there's coming of age for different drivers in different divisions at different stages. And I, I'd have to say this is the time for Lance Erskine. Came so close to his first career feature win here this year. And uh, comes in as the point leader for the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West Series. So we'll see what he can do in that uh, Connell's Construction number 88 
Those Travis Hofstetter missing from the lineup are pole sitter. Appear that way as we get ready for the green flag of the first of four qualifying heats. Field charges down into turn one. Just about everybody out there choosing to use the inside of the racetrack. Mike Bowman out in front. Cam McKinnon second is the complete lap number one. Bowman now stretching his advantage over Rob Neely, who's taken the spot away from Cam McKinnon. He'll roll into the second spot. As here comes Austin Rose as well in the 3S machine, the Bobcat of Brantford ride. He'll get by Cam McKinnon. But it's all Mike Bowman out in front. Austin Rose has done a good job moving forward in this qualifying heat. Mike Bowman, like you said, though, with a big lead, but Rob Neely pretty quick. I'm going to do something I rarely do and look at lap times here in the heat races. They're running basically identical lap times right now. Mike Bowman and Rob Neely, first and second, as they reach the halfway point. And that Radio Shuttle 74 machine is really closing in here, I think, on Bowman. He's cut down that big advantage that he had. He's pulled away from the rest of the pack. Austin Rose now has gotten away from Erskine and McKinnon. Erskine just slipped by McKinnon for the fourth spot. And they're going to have some company. If A.J. Lewis can string together a couple of good corners in that Insta Panels number 24, we haven't seen A.J. yet this season, I don't think. I believe this is his maiden voyage out there. He's been battling some back problems. Two more circuits around for Mike Bowman, and Rob Neely is there with a bit within about six car lengths back off the tail tank of the 71. As they come up on Victor Bomberry here in the 420 machine, one lap left to go for Mike Bowman. Bowman peels down to the inside of the racetrack to put a lap on Victor Bomberry. Rob Neely going to follow him through. Neely with a lot of speed in this heat, but I don't think he's going to have enough. Although Bowman heads up to the outside. This could get close at the end. No, Bowman's going to hang on. Rob Neely going to come home second. Austin Rose will finish third. Fourth is going to go to Lance Erskine, and rounding out the top five will be Cam McKinnon in the 85. And sixth will be the 24 of A.J. Lewis. Remember, because this is an action sprint to a race, only 24 cars will qualify. So we take five cars out of each of the four heats. And we'll run a B main to fill the final four positions. Nice shot by Rob Neely there. Started on the outside row in that sixth spot. So when the pole sitter didn't start and Mike Bowman in the inside row moved up, uh, Rob Neely stayed back in that sixth starting spot and, and moved his way up to a second place finish. So uh, that radio shuttle number 74 hooked up here this evening as heat race number two heads on to the racetrack. Well, this should be fun to watch. On the pole out of Grimsby, the point leader in the NASCAR Pinty Series. From Grimsby, the 21 is Trayton Lapsevich. Second from Mississauga, the four is Mac DeMann. Third from Waynefleet, the 72 is Panner, Tanner Podwinski. Fourth from St. Catharines, the 777A is Tyler Wilder. Starting fifth from Listwell, the 97 is Sheldon Bender. Starting sixth from Oshwegan, 77E is Ashton Van Every. Seventh from St. George, the 69K is Ken Hamilton. Eighth from Georgetown, the 2M is Steve Murdoch. And ninth from Thamesford, the 45 is Curtis Gartley. So is Trayton batting 1,000 at Oshwick? Uh Yeah, yeah, he's never he's been He's never beat. run anything else here, right? Yeah, he's... That, a, just last year, the Pinty's As far one. as I know, yeah. just the Pinty's yeah. race. So Trayton Lamsovich yeah. has never been beaten up until right now. There you go. It's going to be tough with Mac DeMann starting alongside. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to his dad, Jeff Lapsovich, this morning. He said he couldn't, couldn't get the smile off of Trayton's face because I asked him how he liked it. This is a big difference. When you're used to running fendered stock cars, you jump into something that you sit straight up and down in the center of the car. Everything you know about making a car turn and go fast is opposite to what you do in an asphalt stock car. And then, of course, you draw the pole. And then you draw the pole. <laughs> Here we go. Heat race number two. We are on it down into corner number one. Back to man to the high side. We'll take the lead down the back straightaway. Trayton Lapsovich, he could go to school right now. He's got to learn in a hurry from the best there's ever been in the crate sprint division. Yeah, all-time winningest driver in that Leach Performance Engines. Now 
Farm Motorsports car number four. Two wins on the season already, and here comes Lapsovich and Podwinski side by side into corner number three. Podwinski down the inside. Lapsovich working the high side of the racetrack. Podwinski will move up to the second spot. Lapsovich back to third. Then there's a gap. Back to Tyler Wood in the 777 and Ashton Van Every in the 77. It's just a lot of sevens. Wow, Murdoch had a close call there at the back of the pack with Ken Hamilton. They both come out of it going in the right direction. There we see the battle for uh, between Gardley and Bender, the 45 and the 97, sixth and seventh on the line there. And now Hamilton will go around the 69. That will bring up a caution flag. Well, that will definitely bring out a yellow as the field checks up. I mean, even right down to Drayton Lapsovich having to know how starts work because it is different on pavement than it is on dirt. On dirt, you don't accelerate at all until you get to that chalk line because Doug Leonard will call it back. So a lot, a lot of little things, but uh, he looks pretty good out there. Yeah, looking steady in that third position right now. And again, Mac DeMann picking up uh, win last week, be becoming the first in the crate sprint car division to get uh, two wins on the season. So if my math is correct, so far tonight we have given away 40 bicycles, 4-0, and we're about to give away 10 more after these heats. Uh, this round is going to be for kids between the ages of 4 and 8, so if you fall in that category, have your ears open. Following these heat races, we will reel off another round of winners, and I'm looking forward to the parade at intermission, where I don't think it's going to be a parade lap so much on the racetrack, Greg, as it is in front of the grandstands, but it'll still look pretty cool. Great crowd on hand tonight, too. Yeah, excellent crowd and beautiful weather. Great Friday night here at Oshriek and Speedway. As they get the uh, Hamilton 69K rolling there over on the back, or over in the corner, trying to get him in the right direction. Someone comment on the live stream. Lapsovich and Podwinski. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get paid by the syllable? <laughs> Maybe we could work that out. Ken Hamilton in that 69 machine, the Ken's Auto 69. Again, and he was so far off the pace last year, he would get lapped handily in a heat race. Yep. And he's not one of the fast cars this year. But he's up with the pack. He's in the mix. Yep. And, you know, he's tough to contend with because he's faster, but he's still car control and race craft are still things that he's learning. But it's so much fun. They're not all youngsters out there. Ken Hamilton is not a young per young man by, by any stretch. But that doesn't mean you can't be a rookie. Well, looks like the field is set. We'll go back to the green flag. At the Cargo E's restart zone. The cone is out on the front stretch, so a single file restart. No passing until you get by that orange cone here on the front stretch. That'll be new for Trayton Lapsovich as well. Well, they have a cone rule with APC now that they use under yellow, and you can't hit the cone there either. But, yeah, this will be a new process. He was challenged there by Tyler Willard, but he's up to the outside now. Side by side, they battle for third. Oh, Ashton Van Every brushes the wall in the Nitro 54 variety 77E. Curtis Gartley will skate by him down through the corners, and now he'll try and catch that 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven of Tyler Willard. Curtis Gartley started all the way at the back of this one, so you know he loved that yellow flag, gave him an opportunity to get up close and personal with the cars ahead of him and try to pick off a couple more positions. Out in front, though, there is no battle going on as we've got two laps to go for Mac DeMann out in front. Tanner Podwinski holding a pretty wheel in second. Trayton Lapsovich third. The first car in, in the row running the inside of the racetrack. Mac DeMann, 15 career crate sprint car wins here at Oshwikin Speedway. That's the top of the pile, and he's back with the car owner where he had all of those uh, previous 13 before this year with Bar Motorsports, and it's been a great reunion. They have been on a rail this year. Steve Murdoch almost closed the door on Ashton Van Every, and that would have been bad. McDeman takes the win. Tanner Podwinski, Trayton Lapsovich. 
Tyler, Willard, Curtis, Gartley, Ashton, Van Effrey, Steve Murdoch, Sheldon Bender, and Ken Hamilton. That's how they will finish. Coming off of turn number two. That was close. Take a quick break. Be right back here on GeForce TV. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pasta sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Early man discovered oh. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Lap one, heat race number three for the action sprint tour, and it's Brett Stratford out in front in that BS 39. Yeah, Stratford is uh, getting close. He's knocking on the door to that first feature win, and I think it's going to be a, a an exciting moment for a lot of folks. Brett Stratford's keen fans, and he pointed it out last week. They had signs in the stands last week. He enjoys that, and he's a character, and that's why people love him. Daryl Peltier runs in the second spot in the 4B. It's the Iceman, Johnny Miller, running third in the 20. And then Greg Smalders in the double zero, who runs fourth. Fifth, it's Ryan Fraser in the 94. Right behind him is the 14 of Larry Gledhill. Next in line, it's Cam Thompson in the 2018. And rounding out the field right now, the 16X is Keegan Baker. Off a corner four, halfway home for Brett Stratford here in this Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West Series qualifying heat. Heat number three of four on the evening. Only 24 cars will start in the A main here tonight, so it's important with 33, uh, make that 36 cars in attendance that you get in through these qualifying heats. Two thirds of the car get make. Two-thirds of the drivers here will make it into the feature. One-third will not. And that's unheard of in today's day and age, Greg, in racing. So it's it's a real thrill to qualify for one of these races. It's not a given. The heats mean something, and that's what race fans want to see, is Brett Stratford right now is uh, making the battle for the lead. Uh, not, not what fans want to see, but it is for Brett Stratford fans as he got up and went off the top of the green flag. And now he has got a big gap over Derek Pelchaves. Quietly got a great run going on here in second. Each of the top three can be pretty thrilled with the run they've put together. Smalders hanging on to fourth, but here comes Larry Gladhill looking to the outside. Ryan Fraser right on their heels. Stratford going to take the win in this one. Peltier second, Johnny Miller third, Smalders fourth, Gledhill fifth, Fraser Baker, and Cam Thompson in the 28T. Three heat races down, one heat race to go in the action sprint tour. Top five finishers transfer directly to the A main. The rest head to, I don't know if they're going to have one B main or two tonight. Look on the pit notes here. Yeah, it looks like 112 lap B main for the Crate Sprint Cars is all that is scheduled. 
Heat race number four is going to look like this. On the pole in the 2S from St. Catharines, it's Al Slate. Second from Harrisburg, the 14W is Greg Wilson. Third from Woodstock, the 29W is Tyler Ward. Fourth from Kitchener, the 50LS is Adrian Staley. Fifth from St. Thomas, 52 is Jesse Costa. Sixth from Oshwick, and the MK8 is Matt Hill. Seventh from Smithville, the 71C is John Cadman. Eighth from Oshwigan, the 9C is Brian Nanakoke. And rounding out the field from Hagersville, the 11W is Jeremy May. Did we see Trevor Young tonight, or did he not get that car no, put back together? No, did not see his name anywhere on the roster tonight. He was trying. That car was a bare chassis last night. He was trying to get it together for tonight. Looks like he ran out of time. But one driver we should give a salute to, Tyler Ward. Driver that 29W showed up tonight with a pickup truck. In the back of that pickup truck was a crate engine that is now sitting between the frame rails. That 29W. Thanks to Case IH for loaning the equipment to lift that car, lift that engine in and out. And, of course, Parking Lot Robbie. What, what is his official title? Parking Lot Robbie. <laughs> He's the host with the most here at the Big O. Campground Robbie. Campground Robbie. I mean, he was so popular last year for our NASCAR event, just for the hospitality that he showed and the effort he put out. So we're going to take five more out of this one in tonight, tonight's A-Main event. The rest will get ready for the Consi. Here we go. Green flag goes in the air for the final qualifying heat of the night. That was a little sketchy off the start. That was in a, in a few rows. That one went a little strange, but Al Slate going to lead them down the backstretch. Tyler Ward up to that second spot in the 29. Things have settled down a little bit, but that's still a tightly bunched pack from second on back with Jesse Costa third, Greg Wilson fourth, John Cadman rounding out the top five. But here comes Brian Nanico. So Slate out in front who comes into tonight as one of the challengers in the action sprint tour Western. Tour. He is sack, uh, make that third in points and not far off of the point lead held down by Lance Erskine. Oh, trouble for Greg Wilson up there in turn two. He gets way wide. John Catman goes to the inside. He'll pick up the position for now, but Wilson drives it deep into three and four. They'll race side by side down the front stretch. Wilson and Catman down into corner number one. Brian Anacoke into the mix as well as we ride in the drone. Over top of John Cadman down the back stretch into three. Halfway through this qualifier battle for the lead. Costa on the outside. Slate down low in the number two. Tyler Ward just a few car lengths back in the 29. Then a gap back to John Cadman in the 71. And Greg Wilson, who might be about to lose his spot to Brian Nanakoke. Jesse Costa leads at the line on lap number five. Three to go in this one. Costa, Slate. Tyler Ward and John Cadman. That's where the battle is at. Then you got Brian Nanakoke and Greg Wilson duking it out. Nanakoke gets by him and pulls away. Nanakoke just stole that final qualified position, then goes up the racetrack. It's going to be a battle. Greg Wilson closing back in with two laps to go. Side by side between Cadman and Ward. What a feeling this has to be for Tyler Ward to just get the motor in and now be able to have this battle side by side running for the third spot. Trying to hold off John Cabman back in fifth. Brian Nanakoke has some daylight between himself and Greg Wilson in the 14, but out in front, the checkered flag about to fly for Jesse Costa, who wins the final qualifying heat of the night. Coming home second, it's Slate third. Tyler Ward fourth to John Cadman. Fifth is going to go to Brian Nanakoke. Out to the B main, it's Greg Wilson, Matt Hill, Adrian Staley, and Jeremy May. Qualifying concluded, and we'll have a B main for the Action Sprint Tour. Still to come, we'll do our bicycle parade. Uh, do we have more names to announce yet? Or 
I'm not sure. I thought I saw someone coming up the stairs. Nope, they went back down the stairs. So it looks like we will take a quick commercial break at this time. We'll be back on GeForce TV. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Lockhart's Odyssey is BRP's newest marine dealer for the legendary Alumacraft fishing boats, the luxurious Manitous, and the affordable CD Switch pontoons. Come aboard our new outdoor showroom, located here in Cortland at Lockhart's Odyssey, your BRP superstore. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say goodbye, you piece of. Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee. TKC! Let's take this piece of to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of car. Got a piece of car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Bush Weekend Speedway Racing on GeForce TV is brought to you by Pinty's. Making great food fun. And by Quick Wick, the world's best fire starter. Welcome back live to this weekend Speedway as Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement here at the Big O. Tonight brought to you by Strickland's in Brantford. If you're looking for a new or used vehicle, you can check them out. Strickland's. They are right down there off of Wayne Gretzky Parkway, right at the main intersection by the mall on Linden Park Drive. And uh, Wayne Gretzky and a huge selection of brand-new Chevrolet GMC vehicles. Go down and see the staff there, and they will take care of you. I've leased from there uh, and uh, had great experiences with Strickland's GMC and Chevrolet in Brantford. There's their beautiful pace truck that paces every race here in 2023 with Rick Scott behind the wheel. And uh, make sure you check out Strickland's if you're in the uh, market for a newer used vehicle. Now we're going to send it down a quick, quick fire starter victory lane where Clinton Jeffrey has our Nathan Acklin Insurance Top Gun Award winner for the 360s. Mitch, you had a good lead there uh, at the end. Crew, what the crew have to say when you got back? And what do you think about the track conditions tonight? Looks like it could be a bit gnarly in the one and two tonight. Yeah, it's tricky. Like it's it's slick and you know, most areas, but then there's uh, some character. Um, I think it, I think it's going to race well. So we'll see how it goes here. How's your car running? Other than uh, tonight, you know, you've been running pretty good. This team's been producing pretty good for you. Happy with your season so far, Mitch? It's just getting started, really. It feels like, and we're just getting better every night, and that's a good thing. So we're going in the right direction. Just keep trending that way. We'll be fine. Right on. There you have it, Mitch Brown, ladies and gentlemen. He will be our Ackland Top Gun Award winner tonight, and he'll pick up 200 bucks, courtesy of our friends at Ackland Insurance. Coming up here in the next few weeks at the Big O next Friday night, Friday night Thunder, our reality show that uh, plays on APTN. Check that out. 
They are next week's sponsor. It's Halloween in July, so uh, wear a costume next week. And I believe there is uh, going to be some prizes given away like last year when we uh, had everyone parade down front. So Halloween in July next Friday night, all four divisions in action. It will be the Southern Ontario Sprints coming in to take on the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars. And then on July the 21st, should make notice that is powwow week and the speedway is closed so on friday july 21st no racing here but then we'll pick things back up on friday july the 28th the slack lumber presents christmas in july and again all four divisions will be in action on that night and then that takes us into a very busy month of august as instapanels presents memorial night and it'll be the noel teal twin 14s for the crate sprints the brock leonard memorial for the thunderstocks and the art hill memorial for the mini stocks plus noah's dash and the dual on dirt combined races for thunderstocks and mini stocks all coming up on friday august the 4th of 360s i believe off that evening and then on friday august the 11th jibs action sports presents the race of champions sportsman shootout Crate sprints are off that night, but we'll also have the 360s Thunderstocks and the Mini Stocks. And for those watching online right now, they see the upcoming event board. But for everyone here in the house and watching, that will tee us up for what will be a huge speed week. Uh, that Friday, August the 11th, as on the Saturday night, the Flat Track Canada Nationals round number six plus the Vintage Modifieds will be here. And then on Sunday, it is the second annual Northern Micro Sprint Nationals over on the Micro Sprint track leading into Monday and Tuesday nights. A pair of races for the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Fresh Stone 100 plus the Sit and Bull Tire Sprint Car Shootout for the Action Sprint Tour and 360 Sprints. And then the following nights, the Pinty's 100 for the NASCAR Pinty Series plus Again, the Sit and Bull Tire Sprint Shootout for Action Sprints and 360 Sprint Cars. Go to oshweekendspeedway.ca to get your advanced reserve tickets for that huge week. Again, you could stay here Friday, August 11th camp and stay right through till Tuesday the 15th and catch all the action, including uh, the Sportsman Cars, the 360s, the flat track bikes. We get the micro sprints on the Sunday and then, of course, the NASCAR Pinty Series running two races this year on the dirt. Had such a great time last year. They're back for a couple events uh, coming up on august the 14th and 15th take a look at what's coming up on g4's tv here in the next little while next saturday night july the 15th the apc series returns to flamborough speedway for the london recreational racing 100 and then on august the 5th it's going back to the beach sobble speedway always a uh, treat to go up there the APC Series, the Midsummer Classic, 150 laps on that tight bull ring. That's going to be quite the show on August the 5th. And then on August the 12th, the APC uh, Series will run the Stewarts and Kubota 100 from Sunset Speedway. If you've never been there, another great uh, bull ring here in Ontario to check out. It'll be here live on GeForce TV. And, of course, every Friday night here at the Big O, 7.30 start time. It's Friday night excitement, so tune in on GeForce TV. A look at our Tiffany uh, Freshgate calendar here on GeForce TV coming up in the next little while. So intermission just concluding. We'll take another quick break here on GeForce TV and get back to racing here in just a little bit from Oshweekin Speedway. For over 100 years, our company has been unique, a world leader in high precision products, fully committed to energy efficiency and friction reduction. Today is the day to start a new chapter, a new step of our company. 
Today is the day to share our vision, our contribution, our identity. At the heart of our DNA, there is a name, Namerica. We are NTN, and we make the world Namerica. We are all together. We design precision engineering. We believe in a fluid, mobile, and harmonious society. We build positive mobility. We are NTN, and with willingness, conviction, and humility, we make the world Namerica. discovered fire but quick quick perfected fire quick quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire wood stove or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper find your nearest quick quick retailer at quickquick.com Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement. Here at Oshweekin Speedway, Greg Kelman, Adam Ross up at the tower, Clinton Jeffrey down trackside as we get ready for our Lone B Main here tonight. It's for the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West Series. 12 laps will be the distance in this one. And then we will take another uh, quick moment to allow our youngsters that won the bikes to do a parade lap, and we'll head into our four features of the evening. Greg, just want to do a quick feature here at our Lockhart's Odyssey Defender XT. This machine has been absolutely instrumental in helping us get this broadcast and all of our prep done each week. It's an absolute beauty of a machine. Three-seater with all the bells and whistles you could possibly want. Beautiful dump box here. Everything we need to keep making these bro uh, broadcasts happen and great deal with our setup and everything we do here. So you've got to thank our friends at Lockhart's Odyssey. If you need any power sports or fun stuff for the summer or winter, go check them out. Lockhart's Odyssey. So the action sprint tour just getting ready over in the pit area. They were getting called to the line for their B main last chance qualifier. And with only 24 cars making the A main here tonight, 16 in this B main, four will make the A main. So that is a lot of nerves on the line here tonight for these drivers they want to get inside the top four there's going to be some big names going home here tonight starting in the pole for this one out of stony creek in the 24a it's aj lewis to the outside from most in the 70 70 it's ashton van every lining up third from rockwood the 94 that is ryan fraser and starting in fourth from harrisburg in the 14w it's greg wilson Starting fifth from St. Thomas, the 70mm, it's Gabby Darling. And Steve Murdoch, Murdoch starts in the sixth spot from Georgetown in the 2M. Keegan Baker out of Ancaster in the 16X lines up seventh. Eighth will be the MK8 of Matt Hill. He's from here on Oshweekin along with Oshweekin's Victor Bomberry in the 420. He'll start in the ninth spot. Starting tenth, it'll list to the 97 Sheldon Bender. Eleventh, Cameron Thompson from Oshweekin, the 28. Starting in the 12th spot, Adrian Staley. Out of Kitchener in the 50 LS. Travis Hofstetter starts 13th from Kitchener in the 2. Ken Hamilton from St. George in the 69K starts 14th. Joshua Hill. He's from Oshweekin in the 99. He'll line up 15th. Jeremy May out of Hagersville. The L11W starts in the 16th spot. Here we go. 12 laps the distance. Four cars transfer. The rest are done for the night. As we get ready. And green is out, says... Mr. Hunsinger. A.J. Lewis leads him on the bottom. Here comes Van Emery around the outside. We got trouble for Jeremy May. He goes up high in corner two. 
He's able to gather it up, but he lost a lot of ground. Remember, four positions. It doesn't matter if you finish third or first. As long as you're in that top four, you're happy. You're going to the dance. Right now, Greg Wilson runs in the fifth spot, one spot shy of a transfer. But even that's going to be under contest because Sheldon Bender, Cam Thompson right on his tail looking to take that over and then pick up one more. Ryan Fraser right now is the cutoff car. He's the final car in the transfer spot. Sheldon Bender trying to track him down. Greg Wilson and Cam Thomas now as well as we got uh, one around in corner number two. And that's going to put us under the caution flag. Travis Hofstetter around. Now Hofstetter did not make the call for his heat race earlier on tonight, Greg, so he's already had some troubles this evening. But how fortunate are we to have divisions like this, a division like this, where not only is it challenging to qualify it's downright hard like there are good cars that won't make the show yeah it's it's we're gonna look back on these days you know we, we tend to look back in different eras of the golden age and i think right now at week and we're gonna look back on these years fondly because this is incredible what we get to see and and i know this is an action sprint tour event but even on a regular friday night we have this situation and not to this degree where there's this many cars going home but uh, and and we don't want to send cars home but that's the challenge of it all that's what makes the heats mean something the b main means something and it puts on the best racing because the drivers have to race hard they know they can't just cruise it into the a main and then turn up their driving style that it's game on from the time you draw a pill i will promise you this a driver who finishes sixth in this B-Main is better off racing here than they are somewhere else in a 10-car division. And, and there's a lot and There's a lot of tracks and series struggling right now. You're better off being in this race right here, having fun, knowing that you've accomplished something if you get in, or going home and knowing you've got to do more homework to get in next week. Green flag back out, and it is A.J. Lewis at the front, Ashton Van Every Intel with Steve Murdoch and Ryan Fraser. Then that's where it gets interesting. It's Bender on the bottom. Here comes Thompson, and he's really been making a charge. Here he is to the outside, looking for the fourth spot. Cam Thompson into the fourth position, goes around Ryan Fraser on the high side. We'll see if he's done there or if he can close in on that battle for second. That's Ashton Van Every and Steve Murdoch right now duking it out for the second spot. There are six cars racing for four positions. Five laps on the board. Cam Thompson started back in 11th, and that had to look daunting to find his way to the top four, but he's done it in five laps, and he's not done. If he can stay in the top four, Greg, this is a memory he'll take throughout his career. Like for years and years, you'll remember that night where it looked terrible, and you drove through the field and, and got into the show, no matter what happens in the A feature. Good battle up at the front now as Ashton Van Every trying to put some pressure on race leader A.J. Lewis in that 24 machine as they go down into corner number one. Van Every on the outside. Remember, A.J. Lewis has had his way from the start. Now he knows someone's there. Cam Thompson just jumped the cushion. That allows Ryan Fraser to close in. And right behind him, Sheldon Bender is still lurking. He's the next car still with a chance to get into the top four. It's a bit of a distance back to Greg Wilson. The top three have pulled away. Cam Thompson runs in that fourth spot. He doesn't have to be perfect, but he can't make any glaring mistake between now and the checkered flag if he wants to make it in the show. Keegan Baker goes around at corner four. Caution is out with three to go. And now Greg Wilson spins up in corner number two, and he was one of those cars right there in the thick of the transfer mix. That is not the time he needed to spin right there. He was running right behind the 97 of Sheldon Bender. So he was three spots out, but this restart was going to really help the chances of some of these drivers to crack into the top four. 
Well, guys, let's talk a bit about Cammy Thompson. Adam, uh, you know, he was an eye racer extraordinaire. Started racing bone stocks down at, or pure stocks down at Flamborough. Had some good runs there last year. Brother-in-law Jordan Hill stepped out of this ride and turned it over to young Cammy. And man, I got to think the Hill Clan is going crazy back there. He has put some great runs on this car. And he shows he's got the poise to be a future champion in these sprint cars, guys. He's, he's just so smooth. You know, Adam, you're right. All that speed carrying down the front straightaway, and a lot of guys would blow it off the end of one. He just had the perfect layup, rolled it around the backside, and it made those gains to get into position number four. Now he's going to have Fraser behind him. He's going to take a shot along with Bender, but we'll see if Cammy goes back to the top. And, of course, Ben Every up front with A.J. Lewis and Murdoch in the middle. A.J. back, as you mentioned earlier, his first time back this summer. And we see Greg Wilson getting pushed off again up in corner number three. The car doesn't seem to want to fire there, Greg. You know, they pushed him all the way here to three and four. And now got to wonder if something may be ailing on the 14W of Wilson. He's had his share of struggles here this year. Beautiful looking car coming back. Uh, running in the sportsman division for a long time. Always beautiful looking race cars. But for Greg right now, it's not so beautiful because it will not fire. And, and he was lurking there in, in a possible transfer spot. So heartbreaker for Greg. You know, Greg moved up to the 358s also, so those are not easy cars to drive. And we've seen guys like Podwinski, Bowman come into this, and now Tyler Willard's one of the most recent ones. But that Heisen, new sponsor, Adam, you're asking me today, and as he drove by Kevin Abbey, yelled, Heisen! What that is, is that's a, a new ATV company with a factory and warehouse, I believe, in Stony Creek or Grimsby, and they managed to work out a deal, so they got a new quad to use and uh, pr happily running the highs and colors. Very cool. If you are one of the bike winners, please head down to where you picked up your bike because we're going to have the parade right after this race. We also might have at least one more bike to give away, so don't lose hope just yet. That'll come up right after this race. We'll fill you in when we know more. Ashton Van Every, A.J. Lewis, Steve Murdoch, and Cam Thompson. Top four. Those four right now sit in transfer positions. Single file past the restart cone. Here we go. Three to settle it. They spread out just a little bit. Coming down the front straightaway. Ryan Fraser, though, on the inside with a good drive off a of turn number two. The top three have sprinted away. Cam Thompson sort of the lone duck back there in fourth. Two laps left to go for Van Every over Lewis and Murdoch. They've broken away from Thompson. Here comes Fraser and Bender. They're side by side. Bender down to the inside of Thompson, but he'll slide up the track in two. Thompson off the corner. He'll pull away from those two drivers. Bender's driving that car so deep down into the corner. This is going to be a battle to the finish. One more lap to go. Bender within a car length of four. Bender throws it in deep down in corner number one. Tries to make it stick. Thompson goes back by on the outside. He'll try again down in three. Thompson has pulled away, but Bender going to drive it in deep to three. Checkered flag in the air. Van Every for the win. A.J. Lewis third. Murdoch second. Cam Thompson hangs on to fourth. And heartbreak for Sheldon Bender in that 97. He is not going to get to run tonight's A main. And oh man, that was an exciting B main for the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West. Ashton Van Every gets the win. Steve Murdoch with a pass at the start finish line. He picks up second over AJ Lewis and Cam Thompson fourth. And what a drive by Sheldon Bender. He gave it all he had. He he was throwing it deep in the corner and even down in corner one. He went into that area that Mitch Brown called uh, that that area with some character because he wanted to find a bite. He wanted to find an advantage to transfer in, so he threw it into that spot. It didn't stick. It didn't work to his advantage, but Sheldon Bender can be proud of what he tried to do there. We'll take a quick break here on GeForce TV. We'll be back on the Big O. Man, just 
discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. It all started for us at the racetrack, from dirt to water. We have continued to keep the adrenaline and drive to make sure that we are always in the forefront. We are driven to give our customers the absolute best in service, products, and memories with your family. No matter what your passion is, whether it's on the water, in the dirt, on the snow, or on the road, we will always be here welcoming you over and over again through the doors here at Lockhart's. You're not just a customer here, you are part of our team. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Live on Oshweekin Speedway as Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement. Strickland bringing us tonight's racing action on Bicycle Night. Now we see the bike parade down here on the front stretch. All the youngsters getting their hot new wheels to ride this summer. Having a bike is just, when you're young, it's your freedom. You can go wherever you want, right? It's it's. Then you get your license, and it's a whole different thing. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten that place yet with my kids where they have their license, and that's going to be the up, up late at night wondering when they're going to come home. You don't worry about that with a bicycle because it's not that safe to be out on your bike in the middle of the night. But uh, nonetheless, kids, hope you enjoy those brand-new bikes, and thank you to all the race teams who brought and donated bikes for our bike night here tonight. We're going to send it down to Clinton Jeffrey. We got Braden Curra here, and Braden won a bike, but he says, I don't need a bike. I'd like to give it to another young kid. So how about a hand for Braden down here? We have one trivia question, though, and he came up with a good trivia question. So the first kid that can come down here and tell us, tell Adam Ross, between four and eight years old, to tell us where did Trayton Lapsovich finish in his qualifying race today? Where did Trayton Lapsovich finish in his qualifying race today? If you're between four and eight years old, then we'll give away this Brayton's bike. Greg, you can go back and give us what we need for the lineup. All right, it's time for the Gales Cash Blast. 54 laps tonight, and all cars qualify. Here's what our starting lineup looks like. On the pole at a Thorold car number 11, it's go fast. He pulled to the outside from Caster Center. The 28D is Donnie Lampman. In row number two on the inside from Caledonia, car number 55 is Mikey Bobby, Mike Thorne. And his outside from Caster Center, the 28 is Jim Lampman. Starting in the fifth spot from Oshriekin in car number 93, it's M Melissa Miller. And lining up in sixth out of Inbrook, it's Smokey Tim Phelan in the 427. Starting in 7th from Hamilton, Ken Sargent in the 25. Christopher Hale lines up 8th. He's from Guelph in the 79. Starting in 9th out of Burlington in the 97. It's Ron Logie and Logan Schwedek out of Jerseyville. Starts in the 10th spot in car number 53. The point leader lines up in the 11th spot. He's from Ancaster in car number 19. It's Kyle Wirt. And his outside, he was the bridesmaid last week in the 32 from Canfield. It's Mark Fawcett. Starting in 13th out of Hagersville, it's Mike Klazinga in the 93K and Ryan Denning out of Hagersville. He'll start 14th in car number 8. Trevor DeBoer from Hagersville starts in the 23rd spot. Uh, make that in car number 23 from the 15th spot. He was last Friday night's winner. Rodney Rutherford in the 24R from Dundas. He'll line up 16th. Starting in 17th. It's the big dog, Ryan Beagle out of Vitoria in the 84RK and Dave Bailey. And the number 49, he's from Hagersville, starts 18th. Lining up 19th out of Morpeth in the 5G, it scored Grant Zach Bleach out of Port Robinson in the 108, he'll start 20th. 21st spot from Hamilton in the 43, it's Kyle Andrus and Steve Shaw out of Merlin. Starts in the 22nd spot in car number 96. Lining up 23rd from Tilbury, it's Travis Whittle in the 17W and Bray Burning. He's from Oshweka in the 21Z, starting 24th. 25th starting position. 
Belongs to Gino Duguay from Port Colburn in the 196. And Casey Huffman starts 26th. He's out of Brantford in the 13. George Grossel from Canfield in the 03. He'll start 27th. John Over- Overholt in the 96 0. He starts 28th. He's out of Welland. Starting 29th from Tilbury in the 76. J is Jeff Drummond. Mitch Petta out of Wayne Fleet in the 14 starts 30th. Jake Hooker in the 1H starts 31st. Then you've got Rob Hoskins from Harley. He'll start in the 32nd spot in car 37. And Bryce Richardson from Port Colburn, the 11R, will start in 33rd as the field will line up four wide for Gales Cash Blast 54. Well, guys, want to mention Gale is on the back straightaway in the VIP, and when these drivers come by, they know where he's going to be. So they will be saluting. Gale, I hope you're happy with what you see here tonight. These drivers are doing it for you, buddy, as they salute Gale Hill. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when this field comes by the front grandstand, get on your feet, wave your hat, a program, whatever you got. Send these 33 drivers on. This is the Gales Auto Aftermarket Cash Blast 54 for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. Those drivers waving back to you, the fans, 50. 54 laps the distance. What a sight. What a show it's going to be. Let's have a look at the Lockhart ones to watch. And we've cheated a little bit. We're going to pick two ones to watch. They're right in the middle of our four wide. Mike Thorne in the 55. Jim Lampman in the 28. These are two top caliber Thunderstock drivers that just haven't quite had their way yet this year with the result that we know is coming. And do we talk about the smoke we're seeing? <laughs> uh, Donnie Lamp on the outside of the front row seeing smoke from the 28D. 54 laps is a long way to go here. Let's see if that 28D can stay together. The other thing I want to mention, Trevor DeBoer on the pace lap, roared back to the pits. Not sure what's wrong with the 23 tonight, guys, but he went back to the pits. If he does not take the green, he cannot get going, so he's got about a half a lap to get it back out here. Last Friday night's winner already in peril over in the pit area as we get ready to go to the green flag. 54 laps the distance, all sorts of cash on the line. Thanks to Gales Auto Aftermarket, the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks are ready to go green. Field rumbles down into turn number one. No sign of Trevor DeBoer in turn three. Tough break for last week's winner. He's going to miss this one. Out in front, Mike Thorne contending for the lead over Go Fast. Teeple swings the 55 wide out of turn number four. Teeple going to lead lap one, but Thorne still in hot pursuit. Just keeping an eye on that 28T of Donnie Lamb, and he'll go high up the banking, and he did not get up to full song on that first lap, so that smoke obviously was a problem under that pace lap as now we got Mike Thorne out in front over Teeple. Look at Logan Schwedek digging on the bottom in the 53. Sweat it with those pretty wheels on that 53 machine. Only on the right side, though. The left side is just black. The right side, those are sure are pretty. It's a long race, but that doesn't mean Dave Bailey, Ron Logie, Ryan Beagle aren't going to try to scream up through this pack. Rodney Rutherford, Ryan Dinning. It is a collection of drivers trying to work their way into the top 10. Melissa Miller. Sort of the meat in a sandwich down there, dropping some spots. Kenny Sargent gets squirrely in turn one, and we've got a parade heading to the pits. Yeah, Drummond and Phelan both pull off of the race track, so cars dropping off early on in this one. The Gales cash blast, 54. It's Mike Thorne with a good battle for the second spot, shaping up three cars going at it as it's Schwedick, Teeple, and Hale, and now Donnie Lampman's right there. Ryan Beag a little deeper in the field in that Ackland Insurance 84. He's working around the extreme bottom. Kyle Wirt and Dave Bailey side by side in one and two. Ryan Beagle was actually able to get to the inside of those two. There wasn't a lot of room, but those three doing battle deep in the top ten. While out in front, Mike Thorne has gotten himself into kind of a comfortable line out there in the 55. Kyle Wirt, Dave Bailey going three wide right now with Jim Lampman. We watch them as they go into corner number three. Kyle Wirtz, the point leader, Dave Bailey, and Ryan Beagle's in the mix of it as well. He had his motor expire last week. 
and plummeted in the point standings. He's trying to rally back here tonight. Bleach and Sargent mixing it up deep in the field, or is that Hooker? Is that Jake Hooker down on the inside? No, that's Bleach. Yellow flag comes out for the first time as we got one off and in I, corner three. I, I know Clinton, and we got one around in turn two, and Clinton gets upset when I make corrections, but I've been burnt on this same thing, and it makes me wonder, why can't we figure out that the O or the zero at the end of 96 is actually an O with the last name Overhaul? I think nine times out of ten, I introduce him as the 960 of John Overhaul or the 960. I know, that's what I did to him. Guys, up here in turn three, I don't see anything wrong with the car rolling wise. It appears to be all right. All the tires are up. We'll see what's up with the 96 of Overholt. Single file this field strung from turn one all the way back to turn two. Most of the way around this racetrack. Still 48 laps left to go. Right now, it's all Mike Thorne out in front, the Petro Plus Spurger Barn. Husky Penguin 55. Logan Schwedek having his best run of the season. The Advantage Electric number 53. And that's a guy that can get it done. He's 1-4. Always quick. Didn't have the season I think he really wanted to have last year. But uh, that car's starting to show some speed. He's had some wisps of smoke over the last couple of weeks. But it's not affecting the car at all. He's been very quick. And a beautiful paint scheme on that 53. Overholt said, just died, guys. He's getting a push down the front straightaway now. The car just came to rest. No life under the dash here of the 96-0. You know, Greg, as we sit here in this climate-controlled tower, tell me more about your camping trip this week. <laughs> it was miserable. I, unfortunately, this week I developed shingles, and it, it, when you're sweating with shingles, it's even worse. And it was actually enjoyable driving to the hospital just to sit in the air conditioning of my car. That's how bad it was. I could listen to these happy <laughs> stories for days and days. Unfortunately, with all the rain we had, those shingles didn't help me stay dry at all. We, we were ankle deep in water at our campsite. It was wow. phenomenal. Phenom can't wait and then, to get back to work. The, <laughs> and then the heat, it's like 112 degrees when the sun did come out, so... It just makes me happy thinking about because yeah. I, I mean, I had a bit of a miserable week. The heat got to me and I was a little irritable, but once in a while I'd think at least I'm not Greg Gallon. <laughs> like I'm having a bad day, but it could be worse. Wednesday I was wishing I wasn't Greg Gallon, that's for sure. Let's do a quick wick. Fire it up the sights and the sounds of the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks as they go back to the green of the Cargo Ease restart zone. Here we got three piled up down in three and four. Braden Burning, Melissa Miller, and Jake Hooker. As we see Jake Hooker easy, easily able to uh, back it off the wall there, and he'll join the tail of the field. But different story up the high side there. Yeah, Burning looks like the front end might be a, a skew in that 21, definitely. That might take some time to separate those two cars, depending on how... How and what bars have wedged themselves together in the left front of Burnings and right rear of the Melissa Miller machine. I want to come up with a sponsorship right this second, Greg. I've got $100 cash money for the first driver that can swat the drone right out of the air out of, out of ill will. <laughs> I, I think you're brave with your money considering not one of the drivers can hear you right now. <laughs> They will. Word will get around. That's not just a tonight thing. For the rest of this season, if you can knock that drone out of the sky with your bare hands, I got a brown bill that I'm going to borrow from Clinton to pay you with. Is that the safety issue we really want to be oh, we're encouraging? All about, we're all about safety here, Greg. <laughs> Clinton takes off in his Lockhart UTV, which we're very appreciative of. Ru runs himself over. 
Up here in turn three, the Miller 93 and the Burning 21 hung together pretty good. You can see the tie rod is gone here on the left front of the Burning 21. The tires pointed way out. And then we also have a flat left rear here on the 93 of the Miller car. So they're going to have to do a bit of work here to get these cars separated. And the tow crew will go to work, guys. Okay. As we mentioned, there'd be some more opportunities to win a bike. We believe this is the last of them, so listen up. If your name is Jace Love, Adeline Woodox, if your name's just Adeline, I'd go down and see if you're a winner. Carter Craig, Cohen Charette. Wyatt Thomas and Tyson Capping. See, Greg, that's the difference between you and me. I don't shut my microphone <laughs> off when I laugh at something you say. I, I give you the courtesy of the chuckle. Oh, man. So Melissa Miller was turning hard right, and Broden was just running his line, and that did not work out. It's brought me great joy listening to you just announce some of these names tonight. They just give me numbers to announce because they know I can't do it. Look at that, though. That's uh, This happens from time to time. They get wedged in there, and they're working away to get the burning car extricated. Looks like they've done it. Nice job there by our safety crew. Yeah, minimal damage to Melissa Miller's 93. Broden's left front is unhappy. Broken tie rod? Yeah, Bro so the, the front wheels are facing the wrong way. Something's gone in the steering there. Either way, uh, this wheel is way hard to the left. Get your telestrator out. Uh, you should have circled that, Adam. No, you know what? Jamie Modsley had the telestrator last week at Delaware, and it got a little uh, overwhelming. There was a lot of lines and marks going here and there. So I've decided that I want to try to reserve it for when it's really special, Greg. Like when Dave Hunsinger was up in the tower with us earlier on. Yeah, yeah. That's not for air. But, folks, if you get bored later on when Dave comes down from the tower, ask him about his big bruise. <laughs> Don't ask to see it, though. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> ask for the story, but not the illustration. Uh, speak you can't telestrate that? Well, no. no <laughs> he <speaking> did. <laughs> speaking about all about safety, fireworks are not something to be toyed with. <laughs> that was life or death, I mean, within inches, was it not? Ah. Uh, for the next generation of hunting. <laughs> He'd be talking been. like Mickey Mouse for the rest of his life. All right, here we go. Back to the green flag. Seven on the board, Schwedek and Thorne. Thorne, your leader on the outside. Schwedek on the bottom. Coming to the Cargo Ease restart zone. In the Gales Auto Aftermarket Cash Blast 54. We look at a lot of drivers fighting for the inside lane, but then Mike Thorne up high, Kyle Word up high, Ryan Beagle, he'll take advantage of the high lane being wide open. Out in front, Logan Schwedek is edged out ahead of Mike Thorne, but let's see if Thorne can fight back off of turn four. At advantage electric number 53 out in front, Logan Schwedek with Dave Bailey making the charge on the inside off of corner number two. Here comes Bailey in the transaxle 49. Looking for the lead of this lap. A little wisp of smoke at the back of the 53 as they roll it off a of four. Down the front stretch, third, back to seventh, all in a tight group. Go fast, people having a good run here in the early going in that 11 machine. Mike Thorne starting to fall back just a little bit. Ron Logie picks up the third spot, working the inside. Ryan Beagle tucking his nose to the inside of Logie as they race off four. 10 on the board, 44 left to go here for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. It's Dave Bailey way out in front now over Schwedek, Logie, and Ryan Beagle with a fresh piece under the hood as Melissa Miller will rejoin the field just coming out of the pit area. Ooh, 
boy. Oh, wow. I thought Deeple was going in the infield there. Alyssa Miller coming onto the racetrack, and they were already three wide coming off of turn four, and they're going to do the same thing off of turn two as everything bunches up. And Kyle Wirt got over the banking in two, and that uh, caused a dilemma for that pack of cars that had just come through that melee on the front stretch. These drivers are really, really good. Yep. Our, our Thunderstock racers, that they're, they're very reactive. They know what to do with these race cars. They make it look easy, Greg, but it is not. Yeah, from start to back, the quality of drivers amongst these uh, Thunderstock fields. We are very fortunate to have the racers we have here on a Friday night, and they put on a show for us all the time. We're about to see a good battle for the second spot as Schwedek holds it down, but Ryan Beagle's been clawing his way back towards the front, that 84 RK trying to get some redemption after the blown motor last week and, and the uh, dive in the point standings. But of all the seasons to do it, don't forget, Dave Bailey had problems at the start of the year with the rear end in his car, so it played into his hand a little bit there. Jeff Drummond back on the track in that 76 machine. A bit of a throwback to, oh, trouble up in turn two. That's Kyle Andrus in the 43. And they have to go yellow. You, you knew Andrus was going to keep on going because he's just that kind of racer, but he had nowhere to go. So Doug Leonard doing the smart thing, throwing the yellow. 15 laps complete as Rodney Rutherford peels off into the pits in his 24 machine. We've mentioned it a few times tonight, but if you're just tuning in, the reason we do 54 laps tonight is for Gale's Auto Aftermarket. Gale Hill, one of the longest running sponsors here at Oshwegan Speedway, just celebrated his 54th wedding anniversary, so he's put a lot of cash up to this race. 2,500 bucks to win. And he said, boy, it'd be nice to go 54 laps. So that's what we're doing. Black flag being displayed to the 196 for disobeying the one-way radio. Tyler LaFantasy will take it to the pit area for the rest of the night. On the list tonight, it's Gino Duguay. Oh, is it? So I'm not sure if it's Tyler or Gino. Sorry. Yeah, you are correct. But that's disappointing. That's, that's 30 laps of racing he's not going to get to do tonight. And the reason for not listening on the one-way radio. So the Doug Leonard, our race director, communicates to each one of these drivers because they all wear a little a Walkman, basically, if you're old enough to know what a Walkman is, with earbuds in their helmet, and the race director can talk to the drivers. He has to talk to all of them. You can't pick one driver to talk to, so you'll have to take 196. We need you to fall in behind here or go there. And, driver needs to know what number's on their car and that's basically all they need to keep track of Greg Rodney Rutherford rejoins the field so now it's Bailey and Beagle up on that front row Schwedek and Logie back in row two Dinning and Thorne in row number three Hale and Wirt, Wirt the point leader sits back there in row four and then it's Teeple and Jim Lampman leading the top ten as we get ready to come back to the green flag. How about we try it again with a quick, quick fire it up with the Thunderstocks. Slips by Logan Schwedek into the third position. So put Schwedek back to fourth as Ryan Beagle now moves down the track trying to find a line to catch Dave Bailey for the lead. Top 
two have opened a gap over Ryan Denning in the third spot. Logan Schwedek has settled into fourth in the 53. Logie, who had been up as high as third place, back to fifth. Mike Thorne settling into the sixth spot. So we'll see who's able to come on as this race wears on. There's a lot of bite in this track still, Greg. It's early in the night, but they are going to glaze it off. This is a lot of race cars with a lot of tires out there sliding across the dirt. Yeah, the point leader's had an adventurous night so far. He's been kind of mired middle of the pack. He's right now challenging, trying to get uh, up there to that sixth spot where Mike Thorne is. And Kyle Burton, that number 19 machine right now, has uh, done a good job to claw his way back up, trying to catch that top five and, and trying to hold on to a point lead here that he's built himself. I'll tell you, a driver working his way through traffic right now. Rodney Rutherford in that 24 machine just came out of the pits. He's passed four or five cars, but they've been pretty stout race cars that he's working his way around. He'll need at least one or two more yellows, but there's hope for the 24. As Ryan Beagle has closed in on Dave Bailey, 21 laps complete. He's searching around, finding what works best. He's really good through three and four. Steps it way outside, gets a good run off the fourth turn. This time they'll come off, and it'll be 32 laps left to go. Beagle shuts the door, or gains ground rather that time as Bailey shuts the door at the line. And Bailey just running his line. He came off a of four up to the wall. Ryan Beagle really hasn't done anything to let Dave know that he's there just yet. Closes in on the back end of that 49. Runs the same line as race leader Dave Bailey. Should we stay green, they'll be into some lap traffic here in the next three or four laps. Maybe sooner than that as they close in on Melissa Miller and the five of Gord Grant. Slower traffic right in front of the leaders. Grant and Miller. So Bailey, Beagle, one and two. Ryan Dinning all by himself in third, as is Logan Schwedek in fourth. And Ron Logie's got Kyle Wirt behind him. Things are spread out until you get back to Mark Fawcett right now, who runs in the 10th spot, and there's a bit of a pack there running. Bailey to the inside of Grant, coming off a of turn four. Ryan Beagle keeps it up on the outside, keeping that car wound up. Bailey to the inside of Melissa Miller in one and two. Ryan Beagle might run out of lanes, but he'll bring that car down the racetrack at the exit of turn two. Doesn't lose too much ground to the leader. Off a of corner four, they come another time. Travis Whittle next in front of the leaders as Dave Bailey continues to run that bottom and, and Ryan Beagle's trying different things. He's had to here in the last couple of laps because of the lap traffic, but he's tried outside. He's tried following Dave Bailey. He's very good at closing the gap on Bailey in three and four when he follows him down the inside as well. So halfway home for the leaders in this Gales after auto. Auto aftermarket 54. I'll get that out. Halfway home in this one for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. The advantage really goes to the driver in second place right now. Is I don't know what happened to Steve Shaw there. If he spun out, he definitely checked up in that 96 machine. Just as I looked up, I saw him a lot slower on the track than I thought he would be. Just ahead of our race leader, Dave Bailey. But advantage goes to the driver in second because they can see exactly what the leader is doing and they can try different things. When you lead a race, you're going to keep running the same line that's kept you in the lead until someone shows you they can compete with you. Oh, oh trouble. Plazinka around right in front of where the leaders are headed, and that will put us back into the caution. Mike Plazinga gets that car pointed in the right direction, heads to the pit. So does Chris Hale in the 79. Hale showed a lot of speed early in this one. What a fantastic crowd here tonight, Adam. Just uh, thankful for everyone that's joined us here tonight on Strickland's Night. Hope you're having a great evening. It's the way to enjoy a show. It's a beautiful summer night, great night to sit in the stand. So anyone watching the stream, if you've ever thought of making a drive to Southern Ontario, come on out and enjoy a Friday night. There's nothing like being here in the grandstands. Nearly 2,000 watching online right now. And uh, if you're one of those ones watching, give the like button a, a hit. 
That helps things out for us. Black flag. Bryce Richardson. I caught the part of that. Disobeying something. Disobeying the, the one-way radio. So that's oh, okay. the second driver yeah. to fall prey tonight to the one-way radio. Doug Leonard rules with an iron fist. He's firm but fair. Rodney Rutherford is having so much fun passing the last 10 cars in the field. He's going to go into the pits again. <laughs> How much fun was that, though, watching those happy, happy youngsters with their new bikes? It's a big moment. Great time of year to get a brand new bike. It's a beautiful weather. Get out. Get some fresh air. Some exercise. All those things I don't do, but kids, you should do it. Yeah, kids look great doing that. And I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll be at the ice cream truck. <laughs> oh, no. Broken rear leaf spring mount on the 23 Thunderstock. Took out DeBoer before the race even began. The top of the pile last week to the bottom. Didn't get to turn a lap as we get back to the green flag at the Cargo Ease restart zone. Bailey and Beagle. Denning and Schwedek, the front two rows, and Bailey is on it. Boy, there's a bit of a vibration in the right front there. What was going on there, Adam? I'm not really sure. Oh, Rob Hoskins together with Jim Lampman. They get hooked up sideways. They both carry on. They're going to lose a few spots on the backstretch. Out in front, it's Dave Bailey running the bottom line. Ryan Dinning, now that he's got the leaders directly in front of him, without that half straightaway gap. Oh, Lampman into the wall on the front stretch. Sorry, Adam, but he was turning in front of everyone. Oh, that's all right. And it looks like that is going to put us under the caution. Now, Jim Lampman's a veteran. One Mississippi. <laughs> Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Once the field's gone by, hey, oh, it there started. We go. boy. And what we mean, folks, if you drive away immediately, you get the naughty stick wave at you from Doug Leonard because you brought out a yellow. If you sit there for a bit, and that's, you know, that's a mighty wipes moment of the night when you get spun towards the concrete yeah. like that. So he, he might just collect his thoughts for a minute. Get the car pointed in the right direction. I'm a little bit mesmerized by that left rear. I hope that's oh, just it's... a wheel cover. No, look at. Um, yeah, the rear end's a little. Uh, Is it Caddy Wampus? I was gonna say it. I thought no, I overused that. I don't know. I think it's an optical illusion. Although it's now it's definitely not cockeyed. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I don't know. I'd want to take a high-speed lap with the rear end of the car like that. But If the wheel was that loose, you would feel it. Like, that is a big... Going to find out. He's lining up, ready to go. And what was with Dave Bailey's right front on that last restart? It was shaking violently. Well, I'm going to have a good hard look at it as they come to this restart. Clint, have we had any reports on where the 50-50's at tonight? Oh, I should check my phone. We get those I did announce it a while ago, but you were off somewhere gallivanting. Uh, signing autographs for your... I was down with Braden giving a bicycle... Well, Helping him give a bicycle away. It was a beautiful No, no, thing. before that. Uh, nature called. <laughs> and I answered. <laughs> Back to the green through the Cargo Ease restart zone. See, it does it again on the restart. Isn't that strange? Makes him go really fast. It does, doesn't it? And there goes Jake Hooker into the pit area. He's had a rough night tonight. Chris Hale in the 79. Is he still on the lead lap? We'll check the scoring pylon here because he's working his way through the field in a big old hurry. Here comes Beagle. He's the leader of that lap that time on the outside. Now Kyle Wirt, he's going to throw his name into the hat. 
Oh, runs out of racetrack, Ryan Beagle. I don't think he knew Wirt was there. He's going to have to know next time. Ryan Denning keeping pace as well. This thing's getting interesting here as we've got 22 laps to go. Bailey back to the top of the leaderboard. Beagle trying to edge ahead there in corner number two. We got another one slow off of corner four. The Grant 5G will stay under the green flag. Bailey and Beagle side by side. Wirt, Denning, and Schwedek right now the top five. Beagle able to use that high line to take the lead back. This will be a fun one to watch on the line chart. Beagle leads that lap. Bailey leads the next lap. Beagle leads that lap. Bailey going to fight back. He drives to the inside of the racetrack. That cushion, that moist clay where all the bite is, it is way up at the outside. And now Beagle pulls ahead by a couple of car lengths and has the lead in that Ackland Insurance. RK Automotive, 84 RK. Leads a second lap in a row. Kyle Wirt kind of sizing up these top two. Where does he want to go after he got pinched out into the outside uh, wall there on the back stretch? Really hasn't made another charge. Still early. It is so. A little less than 20 laps to go, so now it's a Friday night special to get to the end of this one. Ryan Beagle by five car lengths over Dave Bailey. Beagle committed to the high line. Dave Bailey seems married to that inside groove. When they got to lap traffic, it looked to me as though Bailey was faster. When they had to change up their line, it seemed that Bailey could get through it better than Beagle could. Jim Lampman still struggling with his machine, the 28. Uh, not up to what we're used to seeing, that 28 at the back, just running around the bottom right now in a pack of cars. I haven't talked about Mike Thorne in a while, but he's kept the 55 up in the top 10. Same with Go Fast Teeple having a solid race, running in the 10th spot right now. Chris Hale just outside of the top 10 trying to work his way back towards the front as Ryan Beagle continues to pull away. He's about two tenths of a second faster than Dave Bailey lap after lap. I believe that's a fresh motor under the hood for Ryan Beagle, brand new after uh, blowing the motor last week. And Kyle Wirt, the point leader, scoots off the banking in three. That allows Ryan Dinning to take over the third spot. Slower traffic coming up. Melissa Miller in the 93 just ahead of race leader Ryan Beagle. Travis Whittle just ahead of Melissa Miller. So it's not going to be a pack of traffic that Beagle comes up on, but he'll have to watch. He'll have to make a decision and possibly change his line. Travis Whittle next in line, and then in front of him will be Sergeant Lampman and Huffman for the leaders to deal with. I thought you were calling someone by their military rank. <laughs> Sergeant Huffman reporting for duty. You weren't. I wasn't. And they're stacked up three wide right in front of the leader as he gets by Travis Whittle. And Beagle will cross the stripe to complete lap number 42. So 12 left here. In the Gales Auto Aftermarket Cash Blast, 54. Wow, did that ever work out nicely yeah. for Ryan Beagle. It looked like he might have been mired behind those three cars, and then things opened up. Next time into turn three, look at the reflection on the track from Jim Lampman's left rear. You'll yeah. be hypnotized. <laughs> I had to stop watching earlier. <laughs> My name is Elmer J. Fudd. <laughs> you are getting sleepy. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> I know it's it's like strobe lights. <laughs> Dave Bailey now having to work through the traffic of Huffman, Sergeant, and Lampman. There, I separated it for you. I thought I had a nice ring to it the way you said it before. Beagle really extending that lead half a second faster last time around than Dave Bailey. Closing in on Mike Klazinga in that 93 machine. Rob Hoskins in the 37. We've had some yellow flags, but the top 10 are still on the lead lap. More than the top 10, in fact. That's impressive to me. We've got a lot of fast cars. 17. Well, just 
just going a lap down. I think we're up into the 15th spot. I think less than that. Less I think than that. 12. No, yeah, 12. As Shaw is the next one to go a lap down. As once Beagle got by Bailey, boy, it's uh, he's put the gap there and been able to work through the traffic fairly easily. Bailey in the second spot, and then you've got to go back to Ryan Denning. He was a couple of lap cars away from. Bailey, he's a third word. Oh, had contact with Huffman, saves that one. Nice job by Kyle Wirt. That was significant contact between the 19 and the 13 on the front straightaway. Things spread out just slightly around the racetrack now. Further back, Logan Schwedek to the inside of Travis Whittle in turn three and four. He'll try to get around Whittle and Casey Huffman in that same corner in the 53 machine. He runs in the fifth spot. Whoa, was that Beagle? No, it was Steve Shaw. I saw a red Camaro at the corner of my eye spinning in turn number three. Steve Shaw in the 96. So we have two more bicycles. It's a trick. That sheet is blank. It's invisible ink. You have to have the decoder pen. Morgan McNamee. And Carter Algira. Carter Algira and Morgan McNamee. If I just called your name, head on down and collect your bike. Six laps left to settle it. Dave Bailey, Ryan Din, and Kyle Word. One last shot here, maybe a Ryan Beagle. He has been stout tonight in that 84 RK. Once he got around Bailey, that was it. He took off and pulled away. Now, Ryan Beagle doesn't know exactly how far he got away from Dave Bailey. We talked about it earlier on in the year where they've changed the scoreboard where the the position does not change on the board as the car crosses the flag stand. So the leader used to cross the line and it would just be the 84 lit up. The other four spots would disappear. And as soon as second place crossed, their number would light up and so on and so on. So the leader could use that to know how big an advantage they had. Doesn't do that anymore. So for Ryan Beagle, he, he knows, well, he's going to find out. Dave Bailey's right there with him. Six laps left to settle it. Ryan Denning. That car's been quick tonight. Got by Kyle Wirth there in that last little stretch of green flag racing. That's a wily veteran that I wouldn't count out of a long race. No, for sure, especially if Bailey and Ryan Beagle get to mixing it up. They're good friends, but I don't care. You're a good friend, and I do lots of things to you for $2,500. <laughs> <laughs> it's reassuring. Well, you know, 2500 bucks. So Ryan Beagle selects the outside here on this restart. Kyle Wirt was upset about something at the flag stand. Stuck his hand out the window at uh, the tower. I'm not sure what that's about, but white flag. I believe Doug Leonard came on the well, I know Doug Leonard came on the radio and said single file within five to go. And we were actually at six to go, and they made that correction when they got to turn two. So I th think that's probably what was upsetting Kyle Wirt saying we should still be that, double file with one more lap to go. That math just wasn't mathing. Wh who made that saying? I love that. <laughs> Not an English major. <laughs> so, social media has been good for some things. Dave Bailey in the 49, Ryan Beagle in the 84. How many times have we talked about these two duking it out for feature wins in the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks? Here we go, back to the Cargo Ease restart zone. Six laps left to settle it. Ryan Beagle and Dave Bailey. Here they go another time, down into one. Beagle with the advantage, gets the jump, but Dave Bailey will drive it deep down the inside. Kyle Wirt way up on the high side. Beagle pulls away off the corner. Things sort of settle out down the back stretch the same way they went into the corner. Off the corner, four they go. High five from the flag stand. 
Five laps left to settle this. Gales Auto Aftermarket Cash Blast 54. Ooh. Beagle trying to pull away. Work trying to keep the car on the track. He ran out of banking there. He's going to bump draft Ryan Dinning down the back straightaway. Giddy up, Dinning. It's time to go. But Ryan Beagle out in front. It just doesn't look like Dave Bailey has anything for the race leader. No, not tonight. But it's still long from over. Four laps left to go. You're afraid to call any of these races anymore and say it's over with any amount of time left as Bailey will throw it down deep in corner number three. And we'll work off for another time. Three more trips around for the big dog. Kyle Wirt struggling right now in that 19 machine. He's at risk of falling out of the top five. At the front is Beagle by about eight car lengths over Dave Bailey. Ryan Dinning about 15 car lengths behind Beagle, or Bailey rather. Two laps left to go. This is Dave Hunsinger atop the stand. Ryan Beagle looking to pick up the big payday from Gale Hill. Tale of two weeks, Ryan Beagle blew up last week, didn't get to compete in the feature, which Trevor DeBoer won. Tonight, Trevor DeBoer falls out on the pace lap, and Ryan Beagle looks to be on his way to a big payday here tonight. One more time around for the big dog. Driver out of Vittoria, the 84 RK, looking to go from the outhouse to the penthouse within a week. Blown motor kept him out of the feature one week ago. 54 laps of racing later, he'll come off a corner four to the double checkered, and the big payday goes to the big dog. Ryan Beagle takes it home. Bailey second, Dinning third, then it's Wirt, Schwedick, Fawcett, Chris Hale edges out Ron Logie, Mike Thorne finishes ninth, Zach Bleach rounds out the top ten. What a show. They came out in numbers here tonight. Put on a whale of a show. Many thanks to Gail Hill. We'll send it down to Quick Quick Victory Lane, where Clinton Jeffrey will conduct the True North Dot Bet winners' interviews. See Chip Lampman pulling away there. Yeah, well, maybe having a little discussion there with Mr. Shaw. There's a lot of discussions going on. Come on, drivers, you're tired. It's been a long 54 laps. Have a flaky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lone Wolf Fireworks will light up the sky as the winner heads to Quick Wick Firestarter Victory Lane, Ryan Beagle. In the Acklin Insurance, RK Automotive, APC, Auto Parts Centers. Beautifully painted red Camaro. Ryan Beagle into victory lane. Ryan Dinning pulls alongside there. He'll finish third. And our Clinton Jeffrey will talk to Ryan Beagle here in just a moment. What a week. What a week. From heartbreak to a big payday here tonight for the big dog. Well, he gets ready to climb out here into quick, quick victory lane with our True North Dot Bet interview. Gail Hill making his way in. How about it, Oshweek and Speedway? 54 laps later, the big dog, Ryan Beagle, wins Gales. Cash Blast 54. We'll get Gail and Bobby Lickers in here. Uh, you know, Ryan, what a drive tonight. This car rebounds very well tonight to give you a win on one of the biggest payouts we paydays we've had here with thunderstocks yeah this is uh this is big for us we spent a lot of money this week uh gotta really thank gail i love this race every year i haven't had much luck in it but we got we got one tonight and uh i got a bunch of other people to thank i gotta i thank uh doug uh crash myers um everybody that helps me in the pits the old man for putting up with me all week trying to get this thing back together um there's, I'm probably forgetting somebody. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited right now. Track looked really slick for you guys tonight. Uh, you guys are using the entire surface. How's the speedway surface tonight? It, I love it when it's like this. It, uh, it really suits suits me well. But uh, also got to thank, um, I think my sponsors, Ackland Insurance, um, APC Auto Parts, and uh, Arc Automotive and Hess Auto Tech couldn't be there without uh, without them. We got Gail Hill here and Bobby put on that winner's hat. Gail, did you like that race? That was great. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything you do, Gail. It's awesome to have you here with us tonight. One of the better ones I've been to. It's a sponsor, and I'm glad to see they work, you guys work with me and work things my way a little bit. I know we weren't going to send three cars home. 
No, Gail said we're going to start them all. He said he wanted to do extra four laps. Get in there, guys. Get your pictures done. Ryan Beagle's going to say hi. I'm going to move over here with Dave Bailey, guys. Bailey, solid run for you. I mean, second still, good payday, but I know you wanted to win Gail's money. But Beagle got you tonight. Yeah, I just, uh, he was just better. That's all there is to it. Um, we tried there on the bottom just being patient, and uh, he just found a lane that worked kind of better than us through the center. But uh, all in all, awesome race, and um, really appreciate all the extra money that Gail put up. And uh, just what a great guy for the sport. Thanks, Dave Bailey. Give me one sec, guys. We'll get over here with third as Gail and Bob will come in and have a talk with Dave Bailey. Yeah, Ryan Dinning, uh, you know, it looked like he was going to get right in there and mix it up, and he is so very close to being able to do that, just wasn't to be tonight, but still a pretty good payday, Clint. Ryan, your car's running pretty good. You got the handling down in these big races. You seem to rise to the top. Talk about your night for us. Uh, it was good. We were just trying to take my time getting up through there, and it was a little bit looser than Dave and Beagle were, and I just couldn't quite catch him getting out of the corner. So all in all, it was a good race, though. Solid drive. Ryan Dinning will finish third, guys. Second place will be Dave Bailey. And third tonight, the big dog, Ryan Beagle. We'll be right back live here on GeForce TV to get things rolling. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... To TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. Yahoo! TKC will recycle your piece of car. Got a piece of car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Early man discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. And Speedway Racing on GeForce TV is brought to you by Tiffany Gate. Indulge in a world of fresh meals, sides, salads, and more. Back live at Oshwick and Speedway is Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet and presents Friday Night Excitement. Tonight's racing action here brought to you by Strickland's as we get ready for our second of Four features on the night. The 360 sprints up next, followed by the mini stocks, and then we'll close things tonight with the action sprint tour. Greg Kelman up in the booth along with Adam Ross. Clinton Jeffrey down track side. 360 sprints rolling out onto the speedway. It's the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack. Merchandising sprint cars, and this is how they'll line up for tonight's 25-lap main event. Starting on the pole out of Picton, driving car number 84, it's Tyler Rand alongside him out of Oshweekin and car 68, it's here in Turkey. Starting in third out of Beachville, car number five is DJ Christie and to his outside from Scotland, the 47X D-dubs Dylan Westbrook. Starting in fifth from Tilsonburg in the 17X, it's Corey Turner 
And his partner, row number three from Thamesford in car seven, Eric Gledhill. Starting in seventh from Beamsville, the 88H, that'll be Josh Hansen. And tonight's Ackland Insurance Top Gun Award winner, he'll start from the eighth spot from Brantford. It's downtown Mitch Brown in car number 10. Rolling off ninth tonight out of Hamilton, the 19D. That's Alan Downey on his outside, the 12DD. From Freelton, it's Darren Dryden. Starting 11th out of Scotland, the 87X, it's Sean Evans. And starting in 12th from Grimsby, car number 90 is Travis Cunningham. Rolling off 13th out of Dunville in the 15, car number 15. It'll be Ryan Turner to his outside in the 14th starting spot from Brantford, the 49L of Lucas Smith. 15th starting position. Your Schwinken Flyer, Glenn Styers in car number zero to his outside. Fellow GSR driver in car number 71 out of St. Catharines, it's Mike Bowman. In the 17th spot out of Lewiston, New York, car number 81 is Derek Jonathan. Ollie Porter starts 18th out of Dorchester in car number one. Back in row 10 on the inside, starting 19th, Jamie Turner to Caster Center in the 11. And Bailey Hurd from Niagara Falls in car 70 starts 20th. Starting 21st out of Oshweek in the 77T, it's Tyler Paulus. And rolling off 22nd from Binbrook in car number 9, the live wire, Liam Martin. In the 23rd starting position from St. Williams, it's the 21 of John Burbridge. And going 24th out of St. Catharines, Kevin Pauls in the 46th. So who did we lose tonight, Greg? I thought we had 25 cars. I mean, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, we did. We started with 25. Who did we lose? I love this game. Nick Sheridan. Oh, no. Yes, 45 of Nick Sheridan. Doug Leonard just confirmed, guys. Well, now I feel bad that I couldn't remember Nick Sheridan was missing. <laughs> What a great interview last week when his brother Jake Sheridan won the race down at Delaware Speedway. And Nick is the crew chief for Jake and his biggest fan as well. A great family moment down there. They got to celebrate a big win. Ready to go. Strickland Pace Truck pulling off on the backstretch. 360s ready to come to life for their 25 lap main event. Tyler Rand, Aaron Turkey will bring him to the green from the front row. Dave Hunsinger ready to set them loose. Wow, Lucas Smith in the 49L bounces through turn number one, costs him a little bit of ground out in front. Tyler Rand looking to lead lap number one. He bobbles in turn four. That's going to have Dylan Westbrook out in front. D-Dubs last week's winner had an all-out shootout. Duke him up uh, race with Mike Bowman. He's out in front, pulling away from Tyler Rand. Further back in the field, they fan out two wide, three wide. Everyone looking for racing room. Mitch Brown in the 10 machine threads the needle, working his way into the top 10. Ryan Turner swings by him on the high side. Eric Gledhill, Aaron Turkey back there battling for the fourth and fifth spot. Gledhill gets by Turkey. Here comes Turkey oh, back. And Tyler Rand goes around in front of much of the pack. And oh boy. Wow, I saw Sean Evans coming there quick on the outside line, but everyone gets around Tyler Rand. And the Terry's Taxi Elbrook, car number 84, will no doubt be able to put, get pushed off and start it again. A mighty wipes moment there for Tyler. Yeah, he might have to swing into the pits for some fresh shorts. So this restart is going to bring us to the choose rule. Let's have a look at the replay first from Abby in the drone right at the bottom of your screen and Rand just gets squirrely coming off of turn number four, does a full 360, tries to do it again can't quite get all the way around. He made it to 270 degrees and then kind of stalled out and it's probably for the best. Guys, here's your Case IH track report for turn three and four. The table is set. It is 
pool table smooth here tonight. This corner has come in absolutely beautiful here tonight. Still a lot of bite right there in the here on the bottom. You can see it's black and smooth. It's still some good brown lines where there's a lot of bite in there, but no holes, no rips, no ruffles. It is looking good right down here. Turn one and two are another story. We'll get you that one on the next caution. You just described most of the ways you can buy potato chips. It's not, <laughs> it's not wavy, it's not rippled, it's not ruffled. I'll take mine all dressed, please. Turn one is salt and vinegar tonight, though, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh. Here we get the choose cone out, Adam. This is something some of the drivers had asked for. We want a visual cone. So the cone is out. Out of turn four, they will make their choice. If you go to the inside of the cone, you start on the inside. If you go to the outside of the cone, you start on the outside. You have to make your choice before you get to the cone. And that was what they were struggling with on the asphalt at Delaware. So Westbrook clearly to the inside. Front three rows, just going traditional, inside, outside. Fourth row is the same, fifth row is the same. Well, that was boring. Most everybody just chose the lane they, they would have been in anyhow. I think that's indicative of how wide and smooth the racetrack is. There, there's not really a dominant groove, I wouldn't say, Clint, would you? I'd say we wasted the choose cone there. Nobody changed positions. <laughs> And we have seen it, Adam, in all the races we've covered so far this summer. There's been some major swaps here under caution. Getting ready to go back to green, guys. Let's do a quick, quick fire it up as the 360 sprints come back to life with the Cargo Ease restart zone. I'm not sure what happened there, but that was messy. Well, I think ever so Dylan Westbrook came really slow to the restart. You could see the middle of the field was stacking up big time. And as it got back to Travis Cunningham and, and Lucas Smith, they just got locked together. Clint? Doug Leonard came on the radio, said 47X, you cannot drop your speed. You must maintain the speed. This is another part of the choose rule. Since we did not get back to green, this second restart try will be single file if we get another caution we'll go back to double if they get another caution beyond one lap if they don't complete Correct. a lap they say, and I, you know what there's a lot of common sense involved in that which uh it's fairly rare not really though they do a good job here <laughs> Doug Leonard's all over things I'd say well, I just like to throw in a, <laughs> I try to throw in one or two comments a night like if I haven't said anything really stupid yet I try to throw something in that might get his attention <laughs> normally it just happens organically uh. Guys, down here in turn number one, the track is not in as great shape. As you look over here, Jack, major potholes that the guys are trying to work through. Very bumpy. Same thing over here as we get back to here. A lot of big ripples here. A lot of it is smooth, guys, but there's a couple tricky spots here they're really going to have to try and pay attention to. But, you know, Clint, they can go to the outside or they can go to the inside of those holes. So you can get through turn one without the car lurching and hopping. But sometimes if a car is right in front of you and, and fears off just at the last second, you wind up in the middle of those bumps and you wind up airborne. Back to the green we go. So Westbrook was told you can't drop your speed. So he's maintaining this speed now, which is fine. You can go as fast or as, well, not as fast and slow, within reason. You just can't accelerate or decelerate before you get to the restart. Back we go. Single file past the restart cone. D-dubs. DJ Christie, one and two down in the corner. Here comes Aaron Turkey looking low on DJ, but he'll pull away and hold down that second spot. Eric Gledhill side by side with Josh Hansen. They race for fourth. Hansen getting good grip down on the bottom. He'll come up to challenge Aaron Turkey. Dylan Westbrook setting sail down the back stretch with DJ Christie and now Josh Hansen in that third spot. He had a heartbreaker last Friday night leading the points. He got caught up 
but lap traffic broke the left front and lost a ton of ground in the championship chase. He's back there up in a podium spot right now. Some drivers on the move right now. 71 of Mike Bowman. He's got that wing cranked up high, a steep angle on that top wing, and he's making some good forward progress. D-Dubs right now heading into some lap traffic already, and it's quite a gaggle of uh, cars that he's about to put a lap down as Burbridge, Rand, Cunningham, Turner, and Bailey Hurd are right in his sights. He gets a little high off a corner two that time. He'll swing to the outside of Burbridge in the 21. Tyler Rand is next in line, and as you say, things are going to get even busier for Dylan Westbrook as he moves forward. He has no idea how big an advantage he has over DJ Christie. Thankfully, some of the cars he's passing, not many people using that high groove except for Bailey Hurd in that yellow number 70. Oh, Derek Jonathan sideways off a of four right in front of the 70 machine as now Jamie Turner pulls it into the infield. His night ends early for Jamie Turner. Meanwhile, Mike Bowman trying to work his way closer to the front. He's closing in on DJ Christie as they exit turn number four. He is half a second faster that lap than DJ Christie. Westbrook now working to the outside of Tyler Pals. The caution flag will fly. Debris at the bottom of turn one, guys. Debris in the bottom of turn one is the report. He's the bar possibly from the 19. Dylan Westbrook has lapped everybody up to the 16th position. We're 10 laps into this 360 sprint car feature event with 15 laps remaining. You know, Adam, what I see shaping up here is Dylan Westbrook, obviously the experience, and the veteran, DJ Christie, another driver who's right up on the chip. But Bowman's that one driver who's going to be slow and smooth and trying to chip away at the bottom, and he's made up massive gains. I'm not sure where he started. He must have passed about eight cars already. He has passed a lot of race cars. Mike Bowman 16. started 16th. And the funny thing is, you look at Dylan Westbrook's best lap this race was a 15.6 second lap. So 15.6 seconds. Mike Bowman's fastest lap was a 16.5. Westbrook's fastest lap was a full second quicker. But as the laps wore on, Mike Bowman was turning off some quicker laps. So as they settle into a race pace, flat left rear on the Holly Porter car and two cars back from her, a flat left front on the 77T of Tyler Paulus. So two cars in the middle of the pack. The one with a flat left rear, the 77T with a flat left front. And Holly, told on the one way, decided to stay out, which I don't get. No, that's a low percentage move. A flat left rear for, I could see if there was one lap to go maybe and you just wanted to limp to the end, but well, even Tyler Palace with a flat left front, you're going to try and lift that up, but it's still going to be an anchor on that left front. Once again, the choose rule not, not showing any huge winners and losers. Our main cast of characters up in the front, those top three. We'll see if Josh Hansen in the 88 has anything. And Corey Turner in the 17 again. Doesn't look like he's got the car that he needs tonight, but he keeps on gaining positions. And by the end of the race, Greg, he keeps making good points nights. Yeah, that has him right now second place in the points coming into tonight as we get back to the green flag. Westbrook, DJ Christie. And Mike Bowman chipping away at the bottom. Here he comes. Josh Hansen's right in the thick of it. He dubs pulling ahead into corner three. DJ Christie threw that car down into turn number one, and he just he couldn't get the forward bite. He ran Dylan Westbrook almost down to the pit lane. But you knew Dylan wasn't going to lift, so Mike Bowman up to the second spot. 
Dylan Westbrook out in front. Who's going to be able to get it done? 13 laps left to go next time. I'll be the halfway point as Mike Bowman trying to track down Dylan Westbrook. These two went at it last week. Although one week ago, as Mike Bowman out in front, looked like he was going to pick up his first win, and d wow. tracked him down. It's Holly Porter will come to the stop down to the inside of quarter two. Well, her left rear finally exploded. Half the carcass is sitting right next to the Hutches sign on the front stretch. Actually pretty impressed she made it that far. Safety crew gets out there, picks up that uh, tire off the front stretch. Safety crew also over on the uh, corner two wall about to give Holly Porter's uh, car a hook from the rear end, take that to the pit area. And that would be a good time to say because we haven't had to use it. Our fire crew is sponsored by Eco Fire Service. They service Niagara, Hamilton, Haldeman, Norfolk, and Six Nations. They supply and service and install everything from extinguishers to full fire suppression systems. You can check them out at ecofire.ca. And again, it's a crew we're pleased to have a sponsor for, and we're happy where we don't have to use them. Chunk out of that tire there. Getting a look at it, you can see it's pretty hot down there as well. They'll get it hooked up and pull her back. She is going to request her two minutes in the work area, guys. While we've got a moment, we've got to wish a happy 16th birthday to Caitlin. Happy birthday, Caitlin. Thanks for being here with us tonight as they wrap that strap around. Don't know if that would be wrapped around the rear end or what. Well, guys, I want to wish a happy 16th birthday to Jack, our camera guy here. Jack is going to be 16 on Sunday. Good Where, job, Jackie. Where's the sunglasses? He <laughs> He's looked, got them. He looked better with the sunglasses and the bandana last week at Delaware. It was a good oh, look. There, there we, we go. go. Atta boy. <laughs> All right, enough. Get off it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well done. I wondered. I thought he was getting in trouble. I thought Clint ripped the camera out of his hand. What's going on here? Yeah. No, thanks, Adam, or I would have forgotten been in, been in the doghouse at home. Don't. We are going to follow Holly Porter, and I don't know if we'll be able to get images, but we're going to try our best. Twelve laps left to go in this one. Damage there on the top wing too. Is that just just the vinyl? I think that's pretty. No, that's a hole in the top wing, guys. Good catch, Greg. It's gonna say it's flopping a little. Uh... Yeah, it's oh, a big hole there. More, <laughs> more, more body flopping. <laughs> Well, so far we're getting great images from Clint and Jack. You see our tech building there on the left-hand side. That's where all the top five finishers from all the features have to go after their races. And now Tow Truck's going to make a left turn. This is where all the big haulers live. A lot of the action sprint tour drivers getting ready for their feature event. And who is that that just Tyler Paulus? Tyler Paulus. Paulus. Just so he's going to get a left front worked on on his 77 machine. And they'll probably leave the car up on the tow truck to change the left rear for Holly Porter. Got a great shot so far from back in the pit area. There's John Miller. Overseeing some of the work being done on the Holly Porter number one. And all you can do is the race car driver and sit there taking in the scene.
Brennan Hagar trying to pound down on the wing there. He is one of only four drivers here at the Big O this year with multiple victories. His game on the Thursday night. In fact, I think he has three wins in micro sprint competition on Thursday nights. So they'll push Holly Porter off in the wrong direction, but she's got lots of room to get things pointed back right. Great job, Clinton Jeffrey and Jack. So one week ago, the roles were reversed. It was a 71 Dynablast machine out in front, and Dylan Westbrook tracked him down and picked up the feature win. What did Mike Bowman win, uh, learn from a week ago? And DJ Christie, he was there running in the third spot, so the same cast and crew right up there battling it out for these podium finishes. Will it be the same as last week, the running order they're in right now, or will things change up? And can can Josh Hansen get up in there? That's This caution flag really played into his favor, I think. He was starting to make a move as well. In the J&E recovery, Julie Swayze, Remax, 88H. Now, have we not seen Holly come back on the track, or is she out there and I just missed it? Not yet. Tyler Paulus. Guys, I'm not sure what happened. They pushed Holly Porter off. We heard it might have not have fired. The fact that she didn't make it back out. The wheels are locked up. It's not rolling. Just came over the radio. Two minutes are up. We're going green. Just saw them behind the VIP suite. Still trying to push start that car. So something locked up. And they're just there we go. There She's we go. rolling. They're just coming to the choose rule now. So if that car's running, she should be able to rejoin the field. There she is. Bowman to the outside, Westbrook to the inside. Yeah, not much to report there. Dryden having a good run out there in the fifth spot in that beautiful 12 double D. Ryan Turner sneaking up to six in the 15. So we've got some movers out there. Liam Martin, who struggled in his heat race earlier on, he's up in the top 10 in that nine machine. Lots of racing still to come. 12 laps to go to settle this one. Back to the green flag. Here comes Bowman switching lanes, goes down low, tries to slide up in front of Westbrook. That's not going to work. Westbrook scoots down the back stretch. And Bowman, that was about a 75% slide job. He didn't quite commit to it. And Westbrook has the fortitude to wheel around the high side in that 47. But even with that battling, they pulled away by almost half a straightaway in one lap over DJ Christie. Boy, it is a mess from about 10th on back right now. It is wild racing throughout this pack with Dylan Westbrook continuing to lead now. Sean Evans off, off the banking in three and four. He'll catch the tail of the pack and get back going straight. Westbrook is right up at the ridge of the racetrack in that 47 machine. No margin for error for that driver. Oh, Styers does the same thing as Evans one lap ago up off the banking in corner three. Dylan Westbrook across the stripe another time. And Westbrook is just reeling off some big laps out there in the 47X, closing in on the tail end of the field. Live traffic once again. Derek Jonathan will be the first car he comes to. 18 on the board. It'll be seven laps left to go. So the scoring pylon a little bit off right now, but seven laps left to go in this one. Westbrook going down the back stretch, working through some of the slower traffic. Mike Bowman keeping pace, trying to run that outside line, but just not as quick as D-Dubs. Oh, DJ Christie really sent it in at corner three. And am I looking right? Tyler Paulus, is he a lap down or is he on the lead lap in that 77 T? Well, he made it back out, but I don't know. So he's still on the lead lap. He might be. He might be. He did choose the inside line where some of the cars in front of him went to the outside. 
My scoring is showing a different number than what's on the scoreboard. So we'll see what happens. We know Dylan Brett Westbrook is leading this one. Mike Bowman trying to find a way to reel in the. Whoa, they're side by side for the lead. When the heck did that happen? Steyer's right in the middle of it. So you got the lap car, Bowman and Westbrook as they work through the lap traffic. Here comes Bowman down to the inside. Westbrook working the extreme outside off of four, and he'll lead the lap again. What a race. Westbrook been running that extreme outside, impressive all on his own. Mike Bowman smooth and steady down low with Kevin Pauls and Westbrook almost make contact on the backstretch. This time by, it's two laps left to go. Two to go for D-Dubs. Dylan Westbrook with Mike Bowman giving chase. They'll work through the lap traffic, and Mike Bowman may have given up his last chance at this one as Dylan Westbrook slices by Lucas Smith. What a bold move in three. Lucas didn't see him until the last second. Takes evasive action. Westbrook bounces it off the wall on the front stretch. One more time around for D-Dubs, looking to make it two weeks in a row. The top three, the same as it was one week ago. Here comes Bowman with one last dive at it, but off a of corner four. D-Dubs will pick up his second straight win over Mike Bowman. DJ Christie third. And I think it's going to be Josh Hansen fourth. And Liam Martin crosses the line in the fifth spot. Darren Dryden. Sixth, seventh will be Ryan Turner, eighth Mitch Brown, and ninth Tyler Palace. Good comeback drive for him. Corey Turner in the tenth spot. That's why I couldn't figure out what where Tyler Palace was because my timing and scoring was five laps behind. That was the weirdest thing. I just refreshed it. Palace with a great result. He's got Kevin Lovey's Turner wrenches back there on him, so we expect better things on him. And guys, is this the same podium we had last week? Exact same order. Wow, cool. Bowman into victory lane. Win Westbrook 31. into victory lane, and now we'll get Christian. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, win 31 for Dylan Westbrook here at the Big O as Lone Wolf Fireworks lights up the sky. Yeah, Tyler Palace, that's where the choose rule helped him. On that last choose, a lot of cars in front of him went to the outside line. He scooted down the middle or down on the inside and uh, got himself into the top 10. So a good run there as Dylan Westbrook gets ready to climb out of the car. We'll send it back down to quick, quick fire starter victory lane. Second week in a row, same podium, top three once again. Dylan Westbrook going to make his way up to the top of the top wing and salute the fans here tonight with win number 31 here at Oshweekin in the 360s. We'll get him down and get a word with him here as Mike Bowman also down here along with DJ Christie. And give us a second, guys. We'll get it all set up. Dylan just so smooth tonight, and you saw a number of drivers running that extreme outside line and just having little bobbles here and there. And it, it might have only been a couple of laps where they get off the banking just a little bit. Dylan Westbrook, lap after lap after lap, just running that extreme outside line, not making a mistake. And that's the difference. Westbrook and, and DJ Christie and Mike Bowman both made aggressive moves, and Westbrook was just aggressiver. I'll take it. D-Dubs, another win. Uh, welcome back here to Big O and Quick Quick Victory Lane. you got to be real happy with your car. Again, this thing was right up on the extreme outside of the top of the bowl. Rolling tonight. Tell us what you're driving. Mike, tracking another shot at you two weeks in a row. Yeah, that was uh, another pretty good race. I don't think quite as good as last week, but uh, a lot of fun. Uh, seeing he was behind me on that restart, didn't know if I should take the outside or inside, and then I see him slide. I mean, I knew he was going to be coming, uh, especially in lap traffic. I got held up a little bit there, and seen him poke his nose in. I thought, well, this is going to be another good race. <laughs> good job, D-Dubs. The track looked like it had a bit of character tonight, slicking off like we get in the heat, but still a couple uh, craters there to deal with. Yeah, it's uh, a couple little bumps here and there, but I don't know, it makes it a little bit interesting. <laughs> you can drive through them if you want, but it's a little bit risky, but it makes it for a good race. You got it done again. Dylan Westbrook, congrats. Thank you. Dylan Westbrook, guys, he'll pick up the win. We get over here and talk to Mike Bowman. And the difference between Dylan Westbrook before Mike Bowman showed his nose and after was absolutely different. He bounced that car off the wall. He put it into different places. And Mike Bowman had to see that from his vantage point and wonder what it's going to take to get one up on the 47. Mike, another solid run, man. As a rookie here in the 360s, this is really going to help your confidence a bit. You know, two weeks in a row battling with Dylan Westbrook. I'm sure there was times in the winter where you're thinking, how's this going to play out for me? you got to feel better now. Yeah, I mean, uh, we decided to put this 360 deal together with uh, 
Glenn and Terry and Terry and Brett and uh, I don't even think Dylan was planning on running here when we were putting that uh, that deal together but uh, you know it's it's great to uh, race against good guys it only makes you better and uh, you know doing the double duty tonight uh, the guys have been working their tails off in the pits a um, little mishap on the car uh, in the heat race uh, the wing valve fell off and it was into my hand a little bit but uh, we got it all fixed up and uh, man to come from 16th up here to second behind D-dubs uh, we're pretty happy with that. Should be. Congrats, Mike Bowman, guys. Second tonight. We'll get over with third. Another great night for DJ Christie. This youngster is really quietly, because of the two guys in front of him, putting on just an excellent season and showing that he's he's got the muscle in that five machine. He's my crew chief. Crew chief right here. Hey, uh, D, DJ, solid run, man. Two weeks on the podium behind these two guys. That's nothing to shake a stick at. you got to be real happy with that. Yeah, we're pretty happy. It's... Uh, Kind of getting frustrated finishing third to these guys, but uh, it's a great problem to have, and uh, that's four podiums in a row for our little team, so we're uh, happy to be here, and thank, can't thank everyone enough on this car who makes it possible for us. Right on. DJ Christie will be third here tonight, second Mike Bone with our winner. Dylan Westbrook gets it done. We got two more features to come here live from us. We can speak with on Strickland's night. We'll be right back live on GeForce TV. I heard about a new product line at NTN called Kize. Can you tell me about it? It's true, Kelly. Kize is NTN's new range of spherical roller bearings protected by steel shields fixed on the cage on both sides. It's an unprecedented solution, and it's exclusive to NTN. Does NTN Kize outperform an open spherical roller bearing? Absolutely. NTN's Kize's metal shields will keep out solid particles, dust, and other contaminants, while also keeping grease in. This results in a longer bearing life, reduced maintenance, and overall increased performance. That's impressive. Will our users need to do anything different during the installation to accommodate the NTN Kize? Not at all, Kelly. NTN's Kize spherical roller bearings are directly interchangeable with a standard open bearing. Same housing, same accessories, same installation procedure as they use now. Wow, James. Look, a direct drop-in. What a great news. Yes, Kelly, it sure is. And with a minimum lifespan twice that of an open spherical roller bearing, NTN's Kize delivers the ultimate bearing experience. Now let's get some of these out into the market, James. Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Early man discovered oh. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Weekend Speedway Racing on GeForce TV is brought to you by Mighty Wipes, the strongest wipe around. And by NTN, delivering the ultimate bearing experience. Welcome back to a Weekend Speedway where it's time to go racing. The HRW Automotive Mini Stock Feature Event, 15 laps is the distance, and here's how they're going to line up. On the pole from York, the number nine is Tim DeBoer, starting second from Stratford, the 54 is Chris French. Third out of Oshwig in the 188 is Paul Longboat, fourth from Port Colborne, the 14 Atlas, John Lubeck. Fifth from Waterdown, the 0-1 is Tristan De Silva, sixth from Guelph, the 1 is Jason Tolton. Seventh from Smithville, the 6X is Mike Sarantakos. Eighth from Waterford, the 4 is Wade Thorne. Ninth from Burlington, the 76 is Sean Taylor. Tenth from Cambridge, the 32L is Graydon Lyons. Eleventh from Caledonia, the 265 is Mike Evers. And twelfth in the 66 out of Beachville, it's Martin Schroeder. 13th from Waterford, the 1A is Ashton Dickey. To his outside from New Hamburg, the 21H, our points leader, Ryan Hiller. 
15th from Linden, the 11E is Jeff Elslager. 16th from Ancaster, the 16 is Fabio Oliveri. 17th from Welland, the 14 Double D, Dustin Duga. And 18th from St. Catharines, the 17 is Alex Riley. 19th in the 24 out of Oakland is Lofton Schutz. 20th from Beamsville, the 7B is Sierra Cuse. 21st in the 22 car from Simcoe, it's Miranda Weiler. 22nd from Brantford, the 64E is Doug Erskine. 23rd from Brantford, the 9K is Kylie Dixon. 24th from Paris, the 79 is Steve Miller. In 25th, it's the pinball, driving the number 11 out of Caledonia, Mike Guyberson. 26th from St. Catharines, the 4A is Mason Anderson. 27th from Hamilton, the 81D is Crystal Sewells. 28th is scheduled to be the 88 machine out of Leamington is Steve Conway. And rounding out the field from Beamsville, the 27 is Nico Hansen. That's your starting lineup. For the mini stock feature event, 15 laps. We're about to go green. Dave Hunsinger waves the green flag. We're underway. Problems for Duga in the 14 double D. He's off the pace coming to the green flag. They fan out three wide, four wide off a of turn number two. Chris French out in front. DeBoer runs second. He'll go to the inside. John Lubeck up to the high side as they race for that runner up position off a of turn four. Off to turn one they go, French still with the lead up here, Lubeck running on the outside, looking on the bottom, comes the nine, they go three wide at him. Down the back straight away they go, French with a few car lengths over Lubeck. Look at Wade Thorne in that four, those cars have had so much speed, the four of Wade Thorne, the one of Ashton Dickey, he's looking good again tonight, up in that third spot, oh trouble in turn two. One car around on the inside of the racetrack. Dustin, oh that's Dustin Duke. Well who was the car that was off the pace then? Sierra Cuse in the seven. Working her way slowly across the infield. Two laps are complete in this mini stock feature event. 13 laps remain. Work on the lineup. Still a long way to go. How the, tr the track, Adam, is really smoothed out, though. Down here in three and four, it is black and flat and smooth. A little bit of character into turn one, but as Dylan Westbrook said, there's lots of room to get around it. No, for sure. When a racetrack is rough, Clinton, it's rough from bottom to top, and there's no way to get around it. When there's smooth lines, and it's up to the driver to, to miss them. 360's got through it. Still have the action sprint tour to come for the Strickland's crate division to cap off the night. Doug Leonard tells him to double up, coming for the white. Chris French elects the outside of that front row, but talking under that green about the amount of speed out of Wade Thorne in the in the one or the four and Ashton Dickey in the one, a couple of teammates out of Waterford. They have been impressive to watch this season. Yeah, even Wade Thorne with his problem still managed to get through the qualifier with a flat right front. And we'll line up in third here. A little bit of bumping and banging going on here. What's the point of having fenders if you can't bump and bang a little bit? Longboat was slow there on the restart. He will fade back. A couple of cars get under him already, but off to turn one they go, and it'll be Lubeck dropping to the bottom here. Lubeck down low, Chris French up high. He's going to come off of turn number two with a pretty good head of steam, but Lubeck really got a great run through one and two. Three deep into three with Hiller on the bottom. Thorne in the middle, the nine up on the top. Lubeck will lead this lap number three with French trying to roll the boat on the outside. Hiller started back in the 14th spot. He's up into third now as Chris French rolls the outside of Lubeck. We've got a battle for the lead once again. Lubeck holding the bottom in that Mustang. Adam, we haven't seen the Mustangs run very good around here. When we started, it was the dominant car. But now the imports have started to take over in the Chevy Cobalts and the likes of that. But right now, French leading that up on the top, the Ford Mustang on the bottom. 
Oh, problem for Ashton Dickey in the 1A. He's off the base on the outside, and we've got a couple locked up in turn number two. We'll have to see that. A couple more get in. That will bring out the yellow. We'll go check it out. Mike Evers tried to avoid, just caught a piece of that as Jason Tolton backs away from the 24. Oh, my goodness. Lofton shuts the front end of that car with serious damage. You still on break, Greg? I missed this week's union meeting. I haven't punched back in yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome back to the Big O. Lofton shuts in that 24. You can see him undoing this. And we're going to have a replay of the tire coming off the 0-1 of Tristan Da Silva. So down into turn number one. Whoa. Oh, there it goes. That's an important one, too. It's the right rear. Well, Lofton Shutt sits over here in car number 24. Lofton, this isn't the return we want you to see. Are you okay? Yeah, everything's fine. It just, I don't know, someone drove into me and I got put in the wall, so. Well, the car's pretty beat up. Pardon? The car's pretty beat up. Yeah, it, was, it doesn't look very good anyways. But. Good to see you're all right. Lofton Shutts, and guys, if you look here, this wheel is pushed way back out of kilter. There's all kinds of issues here, so... Uh, this will be it for Loft and Shuts. Spitting image of Dad, isn't he? He is so. Yep, you got that right as the car is now up on the hoist. That insta insulation, number 24. Is that Fabio Oliveri running the Sean Taylor? That's a 16 on that car, not a 76. Where, is that what he's driving tonight? I hadn't even noticed. That's terrible. He falls in line right behind the 37. Yep. We'll scroll down here. Or 32, rather. Yeah, yep. Fabio Oliveri driving Sean Taylor's car. So I wonder what happened to his, his mount. Eleven left to settle this one. Still one more race to come after that. 25 laps tonight for the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West Series. That's going to be a fun race. Ashton Dickey has made the return, guys, so that tells me maybe the center of the rim tore out or something else was wrong on that car, but he is back out here. Well, Dickey's, Dickey isn't the one that lost the wheel. That oh. was Tristan. I think Dickey had a flat tire. Got you. No sign yet of Tristan Da Silva coming back. Although someone's... Longboat. Paul Longboat. <laughs> Paul, Paul Longboat just made a pass of four sprint cars on the warm-up track. <laughs> I saw that. And Doug Leonard was yelling at him on the one way as he was going, so I don't know how Doug saw it also, but... <laughs> oh, it's glaring. You looked up and there's his mini stock sideways coming off of turn two on, on the warm-up track. <laughs> Doug was yelling at him. 188, slow in the pits. <laughs> 188, slow in the pits. He wasn't in the pits. He was on the track, the warm-up track. <laughs> he was warming up. On the Gales Auto Aftermarket warm-up push-off track. <laughs> exactly. On the big track, my car's a little slow, but on the small one, <laughs> loose is fast. <laughs> Back to the green flag for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Here they go three wide. Well, maybe we'll make it four wide into corner one. That they do. Ryan Hiller on the inside, Lubeck in the middle, Tim DeBoer on the high side, Chris French has fallen back. He was the fourth in that four wide battle, but they're still three wide and they're committed in turn three. Here they come, Hiller rolling the bottom, but Tim DeBoer is the leader in the Tim Sonato. Number nine out in front over Lubeck at the line. Then you got Hiller, French, Schroeder's right there. I don't anticipate anyone really being able to get away from the pack here tonight. I think the leader's going to be under attack for this entire distance as Tim DeBoer gets a little bit loose through turn four, but still able to draw away from John Lubeck down the front stretch. 
Shout out to Alex Riley, who's having a good solid run here tonight in the mini stock division. He's running there up inside the top ten. I believe he's got a feature win this year at Merrittville. That 17 machine, nice looking car. Good to see him here tonight. Good clean looking car for sure. Is out in front, Tim DeBoer by four car lengths over John Lubeck. They are ten. Oh, Ryan Hiller, all sorts of sideways down into turn one. Four wide and rubbing off a of turn two. What a battle for third on back. Schroeder has the third spot. Wade Thorne just gave him a little bump. Hiller down, he goes, and now Wade Thorne just lost a wheel. It's gone up into corner four somewhere. Ooh. Right rear gone. Braden Lyons doing a nice job to avoid. Thorne, what's going on with these right? Although, you know what? It, this will happen, you know, as as rough as the track was the first few weeks, quite often, you know, you'll develop cracks and things and they take a while to manifest. Safety crew on the scene. You can see the right rear gone. It went up towards the fence in four. I don't know if it stayed in the park. There's a lot of doings missing from that right rear. Let's see how much is attached on the pieces that come off. Ooh. So it did stay in the park, hit the bales up there in four. Guys, that is more than a wheel. It is a full assembly yeah. off that right rear. And they're wheeling it back this way. We'll try and get a shot of it. Come and, on over here, Jack. And the worst part, he winds up driver's door exposed to the field in turn four, thankful that nobody piled into that four machine. Look at this. This is insane. This is a whole piece of the frame right here that is gone. So the whole wheel assembly hub, everything's there. But that's a giant piece of the frame that's detached, guys. Yeah, that's not going to buff out. Lucky he didn't go over. Yeah, for sure. Safety crew in there having a lengthy conversation with Wade Thorne. Not sure what about. We'll have another look at this replay as he gives Martin Schroeder a tap going into the corner. And then away it goes. And like you say, thankfully the, the car settled down. Thankfully his teammate Ashton Dickey didn't wipe the front of that four machine right off. He was the next car on the scene. Well, here you look at the Thorn car, guys, and here's where the missing piece would. This attached right off, ripped right off the frame. Shock hanging down here, strut, but yeah, all this assembly right here would have hold that right rear in place. It's gone. Black flag being displayed to former track champion, I believe, Doug Erskine in the 64, either that or to the one of Jason Tolton. Tolton heading off to the pit, so maybe it was Tolton getting the black flag. Eight laps complete, just past the halfway point of this mini stock feature event. Paul Longbow back on the track once again. There's no quit in that driver. Tim DeBoer looking to be the third DeBoer to get a win this year. Dusty had one at the start of the year. Trevor last week. Who would have done that in years past? The McDonald family might have pulled that off in years past. There was a lot of them that raced. I can't think of too many more. We'll go back to green on turn number four. Seven laps remain in this HRW Automotive Mini Stock Feature event. We're back underway. One long from over, I think. The way they've been racing out there. Here comes Hillary. He's right on the back bumper of the nine of DeBoer. At 21H is the point leader. Four wide, they go into three. Riley's on the bottom. As Jason Tolton comes back out onto the racetrack. John Lubeck gets a little sideways there. Excuse me, pardon me. Jeff Elslager in the middle. Martin Schroeder up high, and that's 66. And they are still right on the back bumper of the top two drivers. Three wide, again into three. DeBoer, Hiller, and then L. Slager, Lubeck, and Riley is that battle. Third, fourth, and fifth. Fabio is right there. He'll get by Martin Schroeder. Anderson giving chase. 
Yeah, Fabio didn't show a whole lot of flex early in this race, but with five laps to go, he's up there battling for a top five result. Out in front, though, Tim DeBoer by a car length and a half over Ryan Hiller. Four to go for Tim DeBoer. Point leader, Ryan Hiller, finally got the monkey off his back and went to victory lane. Riley, I don't believe, has ever won here at Oshwiken Speedway. Elslager just got his first feature win. Once you get that first win, the next one, not that they come easier, you just know you can do it. The confidence is there. Let's see who's going to get it done here tonight. Good battle for second. Riley has been so patient as Schroeder goes off. He had a good run going here tonight in the 66, but Alex Riley's been so patient on the bottom when everybody else has been getting kind of crazy up in the upper two lanes. He's been just right around the bottom, minding his own business, finds himself with a shot to win now. Running some good laps. Oh, boy. Wow. Fabio way <laughs> up out of the groove. I didn't think he was going to save that as Saren Tacos streaks to the inside trying to maintain his streak of top five finishes it's not looking good right now for Saren Tacos one more trip around for Tim DeBoer Alex Riley's right there looking to close the gap he's gotten by the point leader what has he got in the final two corners it's gonna be close as they work through three and four Riley down low Tim DeBoer up high DeBoer gets loose that's gonna give the advantage to Riley Riley for the win DeBoer second Hiller in third oh Tim DeBoer is gonna regret that final corner Wow, look at Alex Riley celebrating. You know, and it's one of those Alex who? Yeah. Not a regular runner here at the Big O at all. As Crystal Sewell's taking some evasive action. Tim DeBoer will take that Timson number nine sponsored entry to the second spot position in quick quick victory lane now watch this DeBoer with the lead down in three and four and it was just one bobble in turn four that was all it took the car developed a little wow. bit of a push and he nearly lost it when it snapped around Alex Riley already out of his car down here in quick quick victory lane his first Oshweken Speedway feature win. And we'll get him down as he goes down to talk to Mr. DeBoer. And we'll get him over here. How many times has he even raced here, Clint? Art Hill 2018, last week and this week. He says three times, Adam. Art Hill. Tell us, Alex. So my first race here was the Art Hill 2018. Was leading about on lap 23, blew a tire. Last week, finished eighth, and this is my third time ever here, so really can't complain. You know, you're, you ran a very patient race, just kind of doing your own thing, being patient on the bottom. Adam, Adam and Greg were talking about how you're just calmly working up on the inside. He lost it on a four. Tell us about that last lap, Alex. Uh, around lap 12 or so, I started to figure out what to do on the inside of three and four, and it really worked, and I was able to make up the ground that I was losing, and uh, I think that was the difference tonight. Congrats, Alex. Awesome. Thank you. Alex Riley gets it done down here for his first Oshweekin Speedway feature win. We'll get in here and talk to Mr. DeVore. Tim, you know you had a good run going there. You looked like you had him covered. You were going to be the third DeVore to pick up a win this summer. But uh, turn four got you. What happened? Oh, it, just, it just started kicking a little bit more sideways than it had been. And uh, I, could, I could see somebody just, just eating up my corner there. And I thought, oh, I just got to be smooth in this last corner. And it... He kicked sideways, lost a little momentum, and there he came. I thought, oh, I'm gonna door slam him. I gotta get, I gotta get him, <laughs> I gotta get him behind me. But yeah, that's that's not nice to do. So, this is pretty good. Like I've been struggling a lot this year, so it, I was surprised. I thought one of these guys coming because usually it's zing, 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 and I'm in the back. Great job, Tim. This is awesome. Tim DeBoer, not as frustrated as I thought, guys. Give me one second over here with Ryan Hiller. No, and that's the way to look at it. It's a good run. Second place in this division is hard to come by. But uh, that, that will frustrate him a little bit still with a smile on his face. And this young man should have a smile. He drove a great race and protected his point lead. We came in as point leader, you know, Ryan. And these are how you win championships by not, 
you know, have, capitalizing on the nights when things aren't exactly perfect for you. A third place finish, these are good points nights, even though you didn't grab the win. Yeah, I mean, any night up here on the uh, concrete showing off all the great sponsors on this thing is a great night for me. Awesome job. Congrats. Thank you. Ryan Hiller will be third tonight, second Tim DeBoer, and our winner for his first ever Oshmegan Speedway win. How about a big round of applause? Alex Riley will be right back live here on GeForce TV on Strickland's Night from the Big O. Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman Cam K every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Live at Oshwekin Speedway with one feature left to go. It's the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West Series. 24 cars heading on to the Speedway. Adam Ross has the starting lineup. On the pole out of Smithville, the 71C is John Cadman. Starting second from Wingfleet, the 72 is Tanner Podwinski. Row two from St. Catharines, the 71 is Mike Bowman. To his outside from Mississauga, the highlight man, Mac Demand, behind the wheel of the number four. Starting fifth from St. Thomas, the 52 is Jesse Costa. Sixth from Rockwood, the 74 is Rob Neely. Seventh from Waynefleet, the BS39 is Brett Stratford. Eighth from Port Perry, the 4B is Daryl Peltier. Starting ninth from Thamesford, the 45 is Curtis Gartley. Starting tenth from St. Catharines, the 2S is Al Slate. Starting eleventh from Six Nations in the 20 is the Iceman, Johnny Miller. To his outside from Thamesford, the 14 is Larry Gledhill. Thirteenth from Oshweek in the 9C is Brian Nanakoke. Fourteenth from Woodstock, the 29W is Tyler Ward. Fifteenth from Mosley, the 3S is Austin Rose. Sixteenth from Brantford, the 88 is Lance Erskine. 17th from Grimsby, the 21 is Trayton Lapsevich. 18th from St. Catharines, the 777A is Tyler Willard. 19th from Dorchester, the double zero is Greg Smolders. 20th from Ridgeway, the 85C is Cam McGinnon. Now we go to our B main qualifier starting 21st from Oshwegan, the 77E is Ashton Van Every. 22nd from Georgetown, the 2M is Steve Murdoch. 23rd from Stony Creek, the 24A is A.J. Lewis. And rounding out the field from Oshwegan, the 28 is Cameron Thompson. Let's have a look at our ones to watch. And once again, Greg, we go to row number two. The 71 of Mike Bowman and the four of Mac DeMann. That is a potent second row. And our Lockhart's ones to watch are those two, Bowman and DeMann. Two heavy favorites going into this one. 
Round number three for the Action Sprint Tour West, brought to you by Oakwood Transport. Lance Erskine leading the way over Johnny Miller in the points. Al Slate there is third. What a great cast of characters right in that top three. That's a, that's an un, it's an unpredictable top three. I don't want to say an unlikely top three. It's unpredictable. But you, you get that momentum. You have some consistent runs, Greg, and good things can happen. Field lined up behind the Strickland pace truck. want to thank Strickland's again for sponsoring tonight's event. Hope everyone that came from Strickland's here tonight had a great time. Rick Scott behind the wheel of that beautiful machine. And thanks to all the folks from Strickland's who came out tonight. I know if you go through the parking lot here, you'll see a lot of cars that were picked up at Strickland's in Brantford. Great place to go if you're in the market. And great supporters of the racing here at the Big O. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet for the final time here tonight. We'll wave these drivers on 24 strong. They are four wide and fancy for you, the fans. This is the Oakwood Transport Action Sprint Tour West Series. Now, who are we missing from this starting lineup? 4, 8, 12, 16, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Thompson, Lewis, Murdoch, Van Avery. White flag, white flag displayed next time by going green flag racing. Round number three for the action sprint tour. Strickland Pace Truck will pull off on the back stretch the final green flag of the night from Dave Hunsinger to start off a feature event. The sights and sounds of the action sprint tour. Let's do a quick wick. Fire it up. Our final feature gets underway. Number three, that's Jesse Costa. Caution will come out. Oh, Brett Stratford with a problem off of turn four. So Costa up in three, Stratford in victory lane. Not the way he wants to be in victory lane, though. And it's Tyler Ward who did not make it to the start. Stratford got help there and punted, uh, punted around there into victory lane. Although it looks like he's going to need a tow here, so it's more serious than just a... Yeah, I think the front end is broke on the 39, and I almost wonder if he got together with Jesse Costa up there yeah. in turn three. Oh, yeah, he's got all kinds of serious problems here on the Brett Stratford BS39. I think they're done for the night, guys. They got radius rod out of whack. Here you can see this is the steering bar is totally out of length. Bent rim, bent front axle, torsion bars are out of place, broken shock. I believe the BS39 is done here tonight. We'll have a look at the replay. Yeah, and this yeah. is kind of the tail end. The damage is already done. I yeah. think the damage might have happened in turn three with Jesse Costa. Yeah, good eye. If you're right. That was the least amount of words I've ever heard Brett Stratford say. I said, you want your two minutes? He said, no. That was it.
Uh, we talk about the races here and the competition here, and it, it is a stiff. You will not find stiffer competition than what we have here in the crate division, bar none. Just to confirm, Clint, uh, tonight, are there full points for the crate division, show up points, or none, just action sprint tour? Uh, there's full points for both divisions here tonight, so they are yeah. getting home track points and tour points. So that's a big hit for Brett Stratford, came in to... Uh, he was eight points out of first. You know, there was a time when five, six, seven years ago when we would do show up points. But you have guys who have their best run on a tour night and it doesn't yeah. help them for what they're doing. So we have what we call member points. If there's outside guys who aren't members, they'll get slid out. Everybody else will slide up into those positions. So, uh, yeah, it, but it does count. And problems on that start, Cadman did not go. Not sure what that was all about. Bottlenecks people behind him. But Mac Demand, everything is peachy keen for a race leader, Mac Demand. Tanner Podwinski back in third, and then Kappen and Neely duking it out for four. Tanner's had a really good night tonight, and I like Tanner's progression here from uh, the start of the season to where he is now. He hasn't looked out of place by any means, but really becoming one of those drivers you can count on being, running towards the front, second place in his heat tonight. we got a big pile up down to one and two now. Tyler Willard with all sorts of damage to the top wing on that 77. And is that Johnny Miller in the thick of that? Yeah, second place in action, Sprinter West series standings. He's got the steering wheel off. He didn't throw it, he I, just took it off and set it down beside him. Johnny Miller is a pretty cool customer. Tyler Willard climbing out of that 777. Actually, that is probably two of the most chill dirt track racers I've ever met. Tyler Willard and Johnny Miller. Tyler just come over and shook Johnny Miller's hand, and I don't know what was said, but it was gentlemanly. And Tyler will walk his way back to the pits now. And there's not damage to the wing. It just looks like it fell off. Yeah, they went bouncing down into turn number one. It almost looks like Tyler got into the rough stuff and bounced up over top of Johnny Miller in the 20. Not sure how bad the damage is on the Miller 20. It's definitely a left rear tire. What else is going on with that car? Yeah, left rear top wing and a bunch of other issues. We'll send Tyler Willard back here to his car. He tells me the throttle stuck on his car. It had no pull back. So we'll see how that goes. Not good for him in this new Heisen 777. Johnny Miller's got tail tank issues, push bar issues, and top wing issues. Other than that, it looks all right along with the left rear. Tyler got some air there. I wonder where Tyler would have landed if it wasn't for yeah. Johnny Miller being where he was, if that was a hung throttle. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a bit of a... Where's the telestrator? Yeah, that the, the, the tablet went to sleep on me. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it back on, which is really the story of my Friday night life. Omaha. Well, tell them. <sighs> it is after 11 now, officially. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. The 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 the, the, the show does. <laughs> <laughs> the show hosts do go off the rails at roughly 11 o'clock in zero seconds. So Johnny Miller with his gear off, as does Tyler Riller. They will both be done for the night. Tyler, can you talk to me quickly? Tyler, what happened here with your new car? Just trying to get things rolling. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened with the throttle, but the throttle stuck wide open, and I apologize. I'm not sure who's in the 20 there, but uh, there was nothing I could do. We were four wide going into turn one. And I tried to pick the low lane. I was trying to reef up on the pedal, but I just couldn't get anything to come off of it. I hit him wide open going into turn one. At least you're all right as it, Johnny. Thanks, Tyler, for your time. Newcomer here, second week out. Modified standout in the big blocks, trying to get his sprint car feet underneath him, guys. 
You can see how hard that impact was. Some of the bars right around the driver's cockpit there where Johnny sits. Uh, took a pretty hard hit, the top wing, shredded. And it's uh, that, that shot from the back end of the, the car, you could see pretty heavy damage for Johnny Miller. And Johnny just called Tyler over. Not sure what he said, but you could see that it doesn't look like any any animosity in the body language. Just a couple of people saying, hey, that sucked. No, what do you do? No, exactly. Zero intention. When someone owns it, yep. you know, the, the first words out of Tyler's mouth, you, you explain the story. You can be mad at a situation, but there's no point in being mad at the driver. Yeah. Well, a heartbreaker for Johnny Miller, uh, just wrong place, wrong time, and came in second place in the points for the Action Sprinter West Series. So, uh, and and then they have to turn around and race a Merrittville tomorrow night. So, and you know Tyler wants to be in that show. Yeah, right. That's the track he's got a ton of laps on. Out in front, though, it's the highlight man, Mac Deman. He's not giving us any highlights tonight if he runs away and hides from this one, but the, the winningest driver in the history of the Crate Sprint Division here at Oshwegan Speedway. White flag being displayed by Dave Hunsinger. That means next time out of turn four, we'll set him loose again. 23 laps remain in this Action Sprint Tour feature event. Back to man in the four, Tanner Podwinski in the 72, John Cadman in the 71C, Mike Bowman in the 71, Rob Neely in the 74, that's your top five. How about Steve Murdoch? Did Steve Murdoch not come out of the B main? He started 22nd. On a torrid path here, two laps in. Mac to man is the story right now as he pulls away once again from Tanner Podwinski. And you've got the 271s, Cadman in third, Mike Bowman in fourth, and Murdoch running in that fifth spot. And now, Darrell Pelche has been really good all night. Ran second in his qualifying heat. He's up there in sixth. And a few drivers having trouble getting hooked up to this racetrack. Wow, Mike Bowman just about clobbered the wall on the back straightaway. Hey, you talk about drivers having a hard time. Austin Rose, who has a feature win this year. Cam McKinnon is that who just spun? Yes. Cam well, McKinnon so. goes around in three. Some guys having a hard time getting a hold of this racetrack. Uh, Austin Rose struggling right now. Jesse Costu had to restart at the back. And Mac DeMann, all he knows is it's clear sailing out in front of him. But with each one of these restarts, Steve Murdoch getting closer and closer, I think he might be the one to watch. Even though Mac DeMann and Mike Bowman I was going to say we already have ones to watch. Well, watch them all. <laughs> Settle down. I'm a little ornery. The Cohen going out. Doug Leonard's ready for bed. One to go. <laughs> I'm projecting. I'm Project. ready for bed. <laughs> Want to cuddle? Oh, Omaha. <laughs> Definitely not. Goodness. It didn't mean with me. Just thought of you. No. <laughs> Those aren't pillows. <laughs> oh. All right, let's get back to some racing. I'd love to. Single file pass to restart coming back to man, John Cadman and Tanner Podwinski, your top three. Better launch this time for John Cadman. The follow back to man into turn number one. Podwinski looks to the inside. Mike Bowman up on the high side, and that 71 is the top five. Single file down the back stretch. Mac DeMann has picked up where he left off in this number four machine, really looking strong this season, the point leader. Oh, there was a close call for Mike Bowman and Tanner Bodwinski as well. Down a one and two. Bowman gets ahead of Podwinski down to the third spot. 
And now that Steve Murdoch's up into the top five, he's struggling to make passes here and make any more progress as he's mired behind the Podwinski 72. Looking deeper in the field, watching Trayton Lapsovich and his maiden voyage in a dirt sprint car. He's got that wing stood up as far as you can stand it. Leader works down the back stretch. John Cadman having a great run in that Bristol RV 71C. Lapsovich might yeah. be done. Yeah, he clipped, left front. Flipped the inside wall and there is no more steering in that 21 machine. And Trayton Lapsovich suffers the announcer's curse. Drayton will park it down in the infield. And the leader beginning to catch the tail of the field. Cam Thompson will be the first car in line for Mac Demand. John Cadman having a great run, as I was saying, in that second spot and uh, run many a laps in super late models on asphalt in Ontario. Green. Oh, Mac Demand slips up. The highlight man gets off in corner two. Sorry. No, no problem at all. I'm watching a battle for the ninth spot with Curtis Gartley in the 45, Lance Erskine in the 88, the 24 of A.J. Lewis, the 14 of Larry Gledhill. They're only a straightaway or so ahead of Mac DeMann, but yeah, DeMann, that car is starting to slide up off of turn number two. And he's got a bit of a handful right now, and here comes Mike Bowman. Gets by John Cadman, slips into the second oh, spot. Trouble in turn and two. And now it's A.J. Lewis. Boy, the insulation cars are having a rough time down in corner number two tonight. It's a tough one for sure. Clinton, if we, if we have, well, we do have a bit of a yellow. Might be fun to hear what Trayton Lapsovich has to say about his first experience. He was down there in some pretty good battles tonight. But the inside wall, that inside wall almost always wins. We'll have a look at this replay. A.J. Lewis down into turn one, and he hit that bump, and the car just got too much bite, too much turn, and it caught the left front on the concrete. get the finish you wanted but are you still smiling and how did you enjoy your first run here in the crate sprints that was a lot of fun yeah i i, I just missed it a little I, I was struggling to um to wrap the bottom like i needed to i tried moving up and it didn't work for me either but uh just a mistake on my end but uh, i gotta throw a big thanks to glenn Styers and the whole gsr team for making this possible it was a ton of fun and hopefully we can be back that was gonna be my next question any talk of future races Hopefully, I think I think we could uh, see me in this car again here soon. Right on, Trayton Lapsovich, the winner of the Pinty's race, and that, those two events are coming up August 14th and 15th. You know, Trayton's going to be one of the favorites, especially if he keeps dabbling here in the crates, guys. Well, so much for his win streak here at the Big O. He was perfect so far. Yeah. Now he's not. But you could hear the smile on his face. You can tell when someone's talking with a with a smile. I just when I said, even the best do that weekly here. Don't worry about it. It, it happens to the best. Clipping that inside wall is something we see multiple times a week here. And, and the reason why Clinton is simple, uh, well, for one, sometimes it's a bump and it'll upset the cars. But the extreme inside and the extreme outside generally is where the tacky clay is. It's where the bite is. So you don't really want your left front down in the bite. You want your left rear down in there to drive off of it. But to do that, you've got to get your left front as close to that inside wall as you can and then hope to get some of that grip to your rear tires. That's where you get your speed from. So drivers get to, and you can see it in that shot perfectly. That'd be a good time for the telestrator. But like I said, I let it go to sleep. That bite down there is where the speed is. Oh wow, you got it up. What's the password? <laughs> There's a password on the, <laughs> on the Telestrator. Oh my, 13 laps left to go. Let's do a quick, quick fire it up as we come back to the green flag with the Oakwood Transport 
Action Sprint Tour West Series. company now Mike Bowman oh might have grazed the wall on the back stretch that time Mike Bowman running down low off of four McDeman right to the outside I think McDeman has the right idea here you know he's getting up there where the bite is Bowman is going to be real smooth down low but I think McDeman just with his intestinal fortitude will put that car in places that Mike Bowman just won't Mike throws it back down low in one and two, and every time off the corners, he runs it right out to the straightaway wall, gets so close to it, cuts right back down low. He tries to find the winning move past Mac Demand, but so far Demand keeping it wound up around the top. And how about John Cadman, the 71C, running in the third spot out here? Still fairly fresh to the dirt sprint car scene, but doing a great job on a, on a technical racetrack here tonight. And behind him, Steve Murdoch doing a good job of the handful. That nose wing is totally flopped over to the right-hand side out of his uh, rock screen there. And Daryl Pelche with the top five. Change for the lead. Mike Bowman gets ahead of Mac Demand off of turn number two as they approach traffic. Demand runs the bottom of the racetrack in three and four for the first time. Loses a bit of ground to the race leader, Mike Bowman. Through that lap traffic, boy, Bowman in no time puts three lap cars between he and Mac Demand. So here he comes off a of corner four. This time by, it'll be five laps left to go. Demand tried to thread the needle between Cam McKinnon and Cam Thompson. Not quite able to do it. Now he's going to clear those two, but things are just as tough ahead of him with Greg Smulders and Brian Nanico, and Bowman is just taken off out in front. Just about to catch point leader Lance Erskine going to put him a lap down. He'll work to the inside of him off of two and go by the 88 machine. Still three lap cars and almost a straightaway difference now for Mike Bowman. Plenty of racing still to come, though. We've completed, well, not plenty, but three laps to go. Bowman now working Ashton Van Every. Van Every got way up high on the racetrack in turn two. They run side by side down the third turn. Bowman clears Van Every. Two more laps left to go. The driver of the 71, Mike Bowman, over Mac Demand, third place. You got to go long ways back to Cadman now. Flag going to be out this time for Mike Bowman in the 71 machine one more time around. He's got some heavy lap traffic ahead of him, but a lot of space back behind him to Mac Demand. And a big battle for a podium finish as Steve Murdoch's trying to close in on John Cadman and see if he can get it done. Off a of corner four, Mike Bowman's going to score the win. He'll see the double checkers from Dave Hunsinger. Coming home in the second spot, it's going to be Mac Demand. And can John Cadman score his first podium finish? Yes, he can. Cadman third, Murdoch fourth, Daryl Peltier going to come home fifth. Tanner Podwinski with a good run, finishing sixth. Neely seventh, Gartley eighth. And then Al Slate and Jesse Costa round out the top ten And what was a wild night of racing. We saw a little bit of everything here tonight. And this top three is going to head down to Quick Quick Victory Lane for our True North Bet winners interviews. Mike Bowman was the bridesmaid in the 360 sprint, but he made up for it here in the action sprint tour, taking home the victory. We'll get a chance to talk with our top three down a quick, quick fire starter victory lane here in just a moment as they get those cars set up and 
in position. Quentin's so hard working down there, isn't he? Getting the cars lined up. He works hard while we sit here and watch the fireworks from Lone Wolf Fireworks as they light up the sky. Official firework provider of Oshwikin Speedway, a pair of 71s on the concrete tonight. In the middle of that sandwich, Mac DeMann. I think third place might be as excited as the winner tonight as he we'll send it be. down to Clinton Jeffrey. I didn't want to say Big John's name for that whole race and put the curse on him. But his cousin Mike Bowman here brings the 71 down into victory lane. You know, Mike runs the 71 in honor of John's dad, who used to race the players GM series back in the day. Well, Mike, we talked to you twice in one night. That's a good deal for this Bowman Racing team. You've got to be real happy with how your night went out. Good run to see John here on the podium, too. I know that's going to make you happy. But what a drive, man. You picked up another win here in the Action Sprint Tour. Yeah, uh, I wasn't so sure what we had at the start. Um, you know, John was running really good. I think they were just a little bit freer than we were, and uh, I just need to be patient with the car and uh, let it come to me. Mac was running a hell of a pace, too. Um, I don't know if I would have got him in, in just in clean air. I think the, the lap, lappers kind of brought him back to me, and uh, I think my car was a little more versatile late in the race. But um, th got to thank my guys, man. It's not easy to do uh, double duty. Um, it's been uh, we've been working hard since about 6:30. So uh, looking forward to get back to the trailer, having a, a beer, and uh, I got to thank everybody on this car. Um, I didn't get to thank anybody uh, last time we were up here, but uh, Contemporary Concrete Solutions on board this year. Uh, if anybody's looking for a sweet epoxy floor, uh, they're the ones, TKC Metal, uh, Ryko, Seaway Fluid Bar, Dynablast, uh, St. Amon Auto and Truck, uh, Douglas Hydraulic Manufacturing, IRP Max, uh, Hose. Um, got to thank Dave Reedy for the Penske shocks on, uh, on the 360. That thing's, that thing's working really good too. And uh, yeah, awesome. Congrats, Mike Bowman grabs up the win in the Action Sprint Tour West. He'll be headed to Merrittville tomorrow. Give us a second, guys. We'll get in with Mac DeMann. It's not very often Mac DeMann gets out in front with a big lead in one of these races and doesn't wind up taking home the victory, but Mike Bowman was real good in that long run. Let's find out where Mac DeMann might have been able to get the best of him if he had to do it all over again, Clint. How painful is that, Mac, to lead like that, have a good lead, get in lap traffic, and then just get eaten up? Yeah, I know. Uh, Mike's car was working great through the middle and bottom, and uh, even once he got past me, I tried to move down and tried different lines, and he was just he was better tonight. It'd be, uh, nothing wrong with the car. It'd be as fair and square. Uh, great drive by Mike. Uh, yeah, showed me, his, showed me his cards late, and that was it. Uh, yeah, just want to thank uh, Strickland's GM for coming out tonight and obviously starting this class, supporting this class from the inception, and uh, happy to be racing in it, and uh, yeah, good night. Right on, Mac. Great ambassador for the sport, guys. Give me a second. We'll get him. Big John. He, he nailed it right on the head, didn't he, Greg? And, and I think if you were to watch it again, the line he was running was, was where he needed to be. Bowman had one really good corner where Mac bobbled a little bit, but you don't get to see those things from when you're the race leader. I think we're going to have a pretty excited third-place finisher. He did a great job tonight. He's with Clint. John, you know, we started out in your dirt career with the roughest track we've seen in a while. I know you were a bit discouraged by that. We were telling you it would come around. Early in the night, you were like, oh, only 24 qualify. We told you to go out and put it on the track. You did a fantastic job. Talk about your night. You've got to be happy with this dirt program coming around for you. Oh, I don't know. This is almost like a win for us. Uh, if I had, if you had told me, you know, six weeks ago that we'd be on the podium already, I'd have said no way. I mean, I figured by halfway through the season, if we were doing, you know, somewhere sniffing around the top five, that I was going to be happy with that. But to be third already, three or six weeks in is uh, is unbelievable. So, you know, we, we had a, a little struggle in the heat there, but I thought we had a good car. I was concerned about not making the redraw, but we, we made it in on passing points and ended up uh, pulling a number one. I knew I had some fast guys behind me. I'm not going to say that's probably as nervous as I've been in 30 years of racing. Uh, you know, if it was the other asphalt stuff, I would have been glad I was on the pole, but I'm not going to lie. I was pretty nervous tonight. You handled it well. Congrats, John. Thanks. Thanks to the Pinty's people who support this whole deal and Strickland and all the series sponsors and you know, Glenn Styers for putting on an awesome facility, Bristol RV, Power Sports Link Financing, Pro Battery Shops, and uh, 
My crew, Brandon, easy, does a great job, man. Without him, I wouldn't be here. Right on. John Cadman, third tonight. Mac Demand, second in your winner. Mike Bowen picks up the Action Sprint Tour West. They'll be headed to Merrillville tomorrow. That wraps things up from us here trackside at Osh Weekend. Guys, take us home. Another great night of racing. We'll do it all again next Friday night. All four divisions are in action. 7.30 start time. We'll have it here live and in person. So make sure you join us. If you can't make it, GeForce TV will have you covered. So that will wrap things up. Adam, great night of racing. And uh, we'll be back and do it again next Friday. John Cadman, it was the perfect way to close this deal. After all these years of racing, he still gets nervous. Yeah. Right? And that, that's what it's all about. That level of competition, that level of excitement. And that's what we saw here tonight. Great show. So that will do it. And on behalf of the Styers family and all the Oshwikin Speedway staff, and on behalf of Clinton Jeffrey Adam Ross, I'm Greg Kelman saying so long. We'll see you next week here on GeForce TV. Copyrighted broadcast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of GeForce TV. GeForce TV would like to thank you for your support and for watching today's broadcast.